Let's you guys, uh, you girls, mm -hmm. you in betweenies. <laughs> We're here. We have one of our favorite people in the whole world mm -hmm. comedian, host, <laughs> singer, um, <laughs> reality <laughs> TV haver, Nikki Glazer. Hi, guys. <laughs> We Thank never you. do intros. It's so weird. <laughs> it's yeah. so, so it's weird. It's so awkward. I always like feel bad for people who have to do them for me. We were talking about this at the comedy store when someone has to bring you up because there's no host. Oh, yeah. And you have to like, I hate listening to someone. Are you talking about when you said Owen Wilson? Oh, Owen yeah. Smith? So Owen Smith. Are you bringing up when you literally <laughs> called Owen Smith a strong black man, Owen Wilson? <laughs> anyway, and when I said, I thought I had said Owen Benjamin. <laughs> which is so way more, even more confusing. Which we do not mix Owen Benjamin and strong black men. We don't let that go together, <laughs> yeah. Owen. So I said, I said Owen Wilson. I thought I said Owen Benjamin, knowing that I know that's not Owen Smith's name. So then I grabbed the mic again and I go, oh, I'm sorry. No, he's canceled. Canceled. The, and then they're all confused. Like, why is Owen Wilson canceled? We kind of wish he was a little bit. It's like another movie. <laughs> he almost with Jennifer canceled himself. Lopez. Like, oh. I did like that oh, yes, one. That's right. Remember when he almost? Yeah, he did the the ultimate canceling. Yeah, why? and yeah. went to heaven. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, the ultimate can. We kind of forgot doing he did it that. Too comfy. That was. I've been practicing. They were like one, two, one. <laughs> that's how, <laughs> that's his, how she keeps beat. His brother did that on. Uh, the Royal Tenenbaums, yes. my favorite movie. And then he got oh, copied. that's my favorite too. Such a good movie. Richie, so right? Good. Oh yeah. my god. Now, yeah, we kind of oh, forgot that did that. Is your type? Who? Suicidal. Richie, suicidal. <laughs> tennis hey, player. Quiet. Like pro. At <laughs> Tortured. I love excellence. Like oh wait, also the, brother. A brother. A brother. Yes. I love oh my god. Wait, why? Why a brother? What are you talking about? Oh I, boy, I you got to catch uh, up. Okay. Yes, yeah, uh, I have. Uh, I'm a, a big brother fucker energy. She's a serial <laughs> brother fucker. Yeah, I just okay. have accidentally fucked brothers. Um, well, are brother most people brother, brothers? Though. No, no, like, no. I most people fucked siblings? my own brother. Is this what we Oh, <laughs> we okay. find out that Kalila just uh, like has sex with black guys, and the whole time that's what we meant. I have had sex with more black guys than any other race. Is that is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And the award goes, give her the banana. Give her the, no, not that banana, the bigger one. <laughs> the chocolate covered one. Carlos. Don't do that. They don't, don't know that. You Just play with the bit. You can't do that to your bananas anymore. You're not allowed to. It's yeah, you cultural get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had one. I got a, this is like, I don't know if I would get canceled for this now, but it was like four years ago. I went to Carney's, the, like, it's a train restaurant. It's like a train. Yeah, like the, yeah. yeah it's like a yeah. trolley <laughs> with, for the people at home. It's a trolley restaurant. You know what I'm talking about. And um, near the comedy store. And I went and they, I got this like giant chocolate covered banana. It's like one of my favorite desserts. Yeah. And I was like holding it and it looked like a dolphin. It goes, it reminds me of a dolphin, a Miami dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online, plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. What if I told you that you could grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show? Go to Nutrafol.com, use code TRASH to save $15 off your first month. This is their best offer anywhere, only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Free shipping on every order. That's $15 off at Nutrafol, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, code TRASH. <laughs> Whether you're starting small or scaling up, ShipStation makes ship happen. Ship more and grow more with ShipStation. This holiday season, give yourself the gift of stress-free holiday shipping. Use promo code TRASH TUESDAY today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code TRASH TUESDAY. We all love it. We know you will too. Oh, yeah. Guys, the holidays came early this year, ladies. And if you're not sure what to get your man in your life, then look no further than our friends at Manscaped. Get free shipping and 20% off by going to manscaped.com and using Trash Tuesday at checkout. 
That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code TRASH TUESDAY. Get your man a gift. You'll both enjoy the gift of Manscaped. His jingle balls will thank you. I'm so glad you took that one. Can't believe I did it. I was so proud of you. Thank you. Hello, sluggies. It's so good to see you. I'm having so much fun on this episode. Um, I am going to be at Wise Guys for New Year's in Las Vegas. That's December 30th and 31st. It's going to be so fun. Please come party with me, baby. I'll then be doing a one-nighter in Burbank at Flappers. I'm going to be in Wisconsin in January. I'm going to be in Florida in February and March. And I'm going to be in Canada in April. A lot more shows to come. So go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. Also, stick around after the show. Go over to YouTube.com slash Annie Letterman to watch my new solo podcast, Annie Wood. We've been having such a good time and it's so amazing um, to see you guys there. So peace. Hi, guys. I am going to be doing stand-up in Phoenix, January 6th and 7th. You can get tickets at esteronice.com and also check out my solo show, My Pleasure. It's available wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, wait, what were you saying about... Oh, you and uh, you like guys that are super talented. Excellent. So if you're going to be a plumber... I need I need to know like when I check the Yelp reviews of your of the plumbing company mm -hmm. your name needs to be like go see you know Douglas he's a number one in this yes. you know, company I need excellence it doesn't have to be a very impressive mm -mm. field but you nope. better be at the top of it not that plumbing's right. not impressive if Douglas I, I wasn't will referring that. Doug, your ass. <laughs> Doug, your glass, okay? <laughs> he will dig in there and he will get you. That makes sense. Bobby was excellent. Right. Yeah, like you saw excellence there of like he's the funniest. Right, and if you work for a utility company, I need you to be at least superintendent. Like I need you to be <laughs> climbing oh, up God. the ranks fast. Yeah. I like a man that's on the streets going door to door, a Jehovah's <laughs> Witness, a, a Mormon. <laughs> I need someone to be respected in their field. Like, I don't need them to be respected by everyone else, but I need everyone who's in the know to be like, this is the hundred percent, hundred percent. And like, OK, so with Todd, when I met him in the basement of the comedy store, he was doing <laughs> <laughs> basement yes. Todd. He was like so like too good for his position and people only a few people noticed but it yes. was like the people in charge noticed. Yes. Like yes. someone was like you're like the Martin Scorsese of this base and I was like <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yes. And then I Underrated. plucked him. I plucked him from the basement and I just put him around my friends and I didn't say anything. And he just got hired by everyone. Now he works on Netflix shows. Yes. Because they saw it. Yeah. Excellence. excellence. Underrated excellence. Now, Carlos, have you ever been good at anything? <laughs> <laughs> Annie, we're so early in the episode. You can't lean on me. I like to get you. No, I want you to be. Wait, what um, is Carlos's history? I don't. Uh, I don't know. That's uh, so funny. Where did you get him? I from? dare Wait, Carlos Annie, to say. Yeah, no. Annie has a, is pushing my buttons lately with excellence. If you want to say that, you think I'm pushing your buttons? I think you do it on purpose. Are you serious? Yeah. I thought. I thought we just needed the work to get done. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Carlos is, I'll tell you what he's really He gets mad and starts at. throwing things. It does get scary. He's been excellent at being my rebound boy after my breakup. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily sexually rebound, but some kind of like emotional rebound. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Where like all of my pent up sexual How does that make you feel? Just like he's not just sexual. Happy. Like I'm. he does everything else. <laughs> I mean, I do work with Kalila yeah. and Bobby, so I'm obviously the sexual aspect is a little tricky. Sure. He's also Bobby's rebound boy. <laughs> He's both <laughs> of our rebound sexual. boy. I know Bobby's always asking me about friends. He's like, are you dating? What's going on with you? He's always like- With you too? No, just no, in general. just in general. Him and Andrew always want Yeah. Hmm. And what's the answer? Uh, no, not really. Oh. You're busy with work. He's married to his job. <laughs> so- well, tell us your butt dial. I did. I'm um, sorry. Dial. Well, Kalila says it was fake. A girl. I don't know why I'm imagining like a dial inside your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is this a new butt plug? It tells you like what time it is. <laughs> you put it in front of the sun. You see where the shadow is. You know if it's past noon or not. <laughs> I met a girl last week. Um, like in a work setting and she had just gotten my number. And I got a butt dial while I was at Bad Friends Sunday. And I was like, huh, I wonder why this girl's calling me. So I called her back. And then she responded with a bunch of question marks and was like, oh, my bad. I didn't mean to call you. It was a butt dial. But then I got super embarrassed and I brought it up to Kalila. And she was like, that's a move for sure. A hundred percent. I've done mm. that. I think it can be a move. But the 
but she seemed confused. Have you talked to her since? Yeah, we saw. I saw her uh, like two days ago, and it was like fun and normal. It was. I She's know. been watching all of your stories, though. Yes. Okay, is that is the how much. What did we do before stories to know if someone was into yeah. us? How it's the fuck so did we know funny. I get so it's excited. So yeah. you're like, oh. I mean, you can tell if you know. You guys were even talking about on the last episode about um, people blocking you and feeling like that's a sign that like, oh, good. I'm yeah. Causing like I'm it's it's, sure. it's yeah. flattering when someone blocks you, but like you can tell when girls are starting to be threatened by you or like people just find out who you are or like mm -hmm. or or and then there's the thing of like watching one of your stories because sometimes i watch so it will jump to someone's story because i've been watching the person before and i'll go oh shit i don't want them to think yeah. i'm watching this and then i get off it but sometimes like back in my single days i would want to get someone's attention and i would only watch the first one oh. and then purposely not watch the other the rest Ooh. so sometimes That's i don't know if they're doing that move to me because i've we've done that but it's so funny like boys are like not paying attention to us too like, i know the they guys. are like, like, you notice these like things? we'd be really good lesbians well carlos you're not the Stereotypical I think guy. May, but the, with the whole earlier guy with the whole butt dial thing, I was telling yeah. him that um, sometimes, like the spirit moves me to call a boy that I like, and I think that can sometimes be either intimidating, out of the blue, like it, there's no. But I'm like, oh, I really just I had a thought in my mind. I feel strong. I feel chatty. I'm gonna call this boy I like, right? Yeah. And I do that, but then they don't pick up. So when they don't pick up, now I'm embarrassed because I was coming in hot. And then I immediately text them, oh, sorry, butt dial. And they're like, all good. And oh, then it that just is takes great. it away. Oh, I think that, okay, so wait a second. Did you get a call and it, I, did you pick up and you just heard like ch chatter that wasn't no, for you? I missed the call. You missed it. And oh, I called back. that is Our a great move. idea. I would never think to do that and say butt dial when I get insecure after they don't pick up. Hey, it just eliminates my shame of being like like impulsive sometimes because I can do that if I like have a crush on someone. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to call can't, them. You can't do that for a text that you're like, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while and I think it's really shitty. And you send this whole yeah. thing and you're like, oh, sorry, but text. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I meant to send just... that to another person that we have the same circumstances as. Yeah. <laughs> but I had a boy called That's me out smart. recently and he was like are you sure that was a butt dial Ooh. and i was like oh he's on to my shit i'm like it was <laughs> it was absolutely a butt dial he's like three times <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's I'm fucking like 11 30 p.m <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like i accidentally text just waxed oh whoops <laughs> <laughs> my bad oh, i didn't mean it i was just my car guy <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, car sitter. Um, what do you guys think about this new um, trend in Korean bars? I, I I don't think there are any of them yet in the United States, but it's basically like they're they're dating bars. You go with a group of four of your girlfriends and um, mm. men go with a group of four of their friends and with the idea that you're going to commingle. But it's um, um, if you were to bring three of your friends along with you, would there be a strategy to which friends you would bring to a dating bar? I think I think this is a great idea because you want your friends there when you, if you're going to a dating bar, it's like we're here to meet people that we're gonna have sex with, which is a lot of pressure. And it's like, right. we well, were talking about this, I think on Tiger Belly of like, I hate going on dates because you sit down and you're just like, are we gonna have sex or maybe end up together the rest of our lives? And it's just mm -hmm. that permeating the discussion of like, how many siblings do you have? But you're still thinking about, am I gonna lick your penis? <laughs> or do I have to like fully reject you and tell you I don't, or, I would rather yeah. die. And maybe, like, <laughs> I would rather be yeah. in like such a weird position where I'm like hurting you so bad, making you feel so bad. Honestly, you're than lick nailing your it. Like that it was more my anxiety a lot of times on dates is like, what if I don't want to? Yes. Like, how badly? The best case scenario is, is you're like, do I want to fuck in the so first right. night or the second night? But uh, yeah, I think you would want to bring a friend that is uh, already with someone so they aren't a threat, but they're like fun and they're just like wing woman. And then two people who are less attractive than you. Okay, that's what I was thinking, right? <laughs> she said or, it so cold blooded. <laughs> Didn't make eye contact with me, rude. You don't show up with oh, three other are hot. Here. Are You're in? not. You, neither of you are meeting um, with me to the Korean bar. But bringing way. three equal hotties could up your chances of getting yeah. the four hottest boys. I got to bring you. one Korean friend to translate. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be the only just whitey, not speaking any, not knowing anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder if that would translate over here and how that would work out. Like, there's so many types of bars around the world that you know America what it is? hasn't caught up to. Like, the 28 and over bars in Australia. Those, I think that's genius. That's so smart. It's so fun to, like, just... No men will want to go there. <laughs> and I, well, the ones that matter will. Yeah. But, like, um, you know what I was thinking? The reason why it can't happen here is because our nasty little pervert... 
American boys would 100% end up raping some of the girls and then <laughs> the the bar would be liable. Do you know what I mean? Oh. They'd be like, oh, we like set you guys up instead of it just being like, oh, it's a place you guys could meet to fuck. Right. If you're like, you're coming here to fuck or I guess you could say find love. <laughs> <laughs> I actually take back what I said about less attractive. I kind of want my friends to be more attractive so that if the person chooses me, I know that they're like, they... They up against the odds. I still won. Like yeah. I want to. I don't want to set it so that I'm not. You know, I like the competition. Yeah, I like to win against your friends. <laughs> against your dear friends, your yeah. three closest friends. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't know. In high school, I always I kind of liked being. I was scared of boys, so I liked not being the one that the boys liked. But I think now. It just bums me out. I have a friend who's like a model and every time I would like a boy and I would bring her with us because she's just fun and like was yeah. never threatening, never like she would. She's so pretty that she has developed techniques to make other girls like her and comfortable around her because Aww. other girls hate her so much. So she's always like, oh, I just farted or she'll be like, yeah. God, I stink. Or she'll just do this face where she like tucks up her lips and she's like, <laughs> but she does it right away. And as soon as she senses someone like any girl that is a little bit insecure, she does this and then suddenly the girl likes her. I've seen it happen. But My friend, like, she just is so used to girls not liking her off off the jump that she has developed this technique. Like, it. sometimes I'm around her, I'm like, you don't have to be smelly today. Like, it's okay. <laughs> no. Like, just be, like, it's okay. You're just a pretty girl. But then it would annoy me. She would g come, no makeup, farting, smelling her pits. And then this guy that I like, she knows I like him. And I'm like, you know, like, meet this guy that I like. I have a crush on. I bring her to the comedy cellar. He's like hanging out with us in the booth. And she would get up to go to the bathroom. And I mean, this happened so many times. As soon as she would get up to go, they'd go, oh my God, she is so good looking. Holy <laughs> shit. I can't even focus. Oh my fucking God. And it, and like, bro down with me about it. And then I go, I yeah, I know. And then it's done. I can't be, I can't yeah. ever like them ever. And that used to happen with me with my sister all the time in high school. Every time she left the room, my friends, guys would just go, oh my God, how are you around that all the time? I'm like, <laughs> like I'm anorexic. I That's how like I, I, I literally can't leave. I legally have to stay here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, th but uh, yeah, that is, that's happened a lot. I mean, do you, you guys relate to, have you ever had that happen where a guy? No, I've always I think been they sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, you guys are hot. I can imagine no, you're the ones that get up. I had, no, I had a Thunder Stealer friend who she didn't even mean to do it. Yeah. It's like she was just so charismatic, so pretty, perfect tits. Like, she just was like, so like sexually, like outgoing. Everything about her was just so charming. And I would like bring her around and every guy that had been like following me around like a puppy dog with a crush on me that I was like deciding between, I was like... Should it be Jake or Tom? And they would come, they'd be like, oh my God. They'd be like falling around with like their tongues drooling. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I guess there's nobody. Yeah, I'm getting her scraps Well, have tonight. you guys been yeah. watching Love is Blind? Do you watch that show? Yeah, I'm I still on season. the fourth episode. I only yeah. watch Fuckboy yeah. Island. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -huh, thank you. But uh, it is true. Like w when they get out of the pods and they pick their person and then they the other guys see the other women that right. they were got close there's this thing in the later episodes, I'm not giving anything away really where it's because this happens every season on that show. The guys see the girl that they would say on in the real world, that's the kind of girl I would go right. for. And then the girl that they are with, who's like, they fell in love. They're like, I love you. I love your soul. But that's, just, and this one guy is getting in so much trouble because he's like, well, that, you know, Colleen is a 10 out of 10. You're a nine out of 10, but like, she's, Shit. I'm sorry. It's just true. She's hot. Like, and they kind of do that thing of like, but it's, am I supposed to lie to you? And it's like the yeah. casually cruel in the name of being honest. Well, do you watch uh, Married at First Sight? No. Okay. They have a guy on it that's like told his wife that he's not attracted to her. Like after they get married, it's like, you just don't, I mean, you don't just work that. on it. And then she got so anxiously attached to him because he had rejected her so yeah. hard. I was like, been there, bitch. He's like ugly. Sorry, you're ugly. He's <laughs> ugly. He's like a nerd. Like he's just like annoying. And she's mm -hmm. like so cool. Yeah. And she got these big titties and she's so like, she's just great. And she's just doing everything she can to accommodate him. And it's all because of that initial like, how do you bounce back from this fucking? Yeah, I, I you know, I insult. as a serial dater of Uggos, <laughs> um, I, I let the record play till the very, the very end. And I would never have, there was this one boy, I swear, I'm not like, this is not trying to be mean at all, but I'm pretty sure he had an extra chromosome, like for certain. I was like, huh, he could be, he could not be, but Are we, what? We're going to talk about him again. Who? which guy is this? <laughs> I thought we were done talking about him. Bobby? Reddit's going to go crazy. <laughs> no, I'm talking.
<laughs> but I liked him so much. He he was a great musician. He was a great artist. He was so smart. Like everything Finger about paints. him. What? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember thinking, telling my mom, like, I think this person is perfect. But yeah. anytime like I roll over when I wake up in the morning and I see his face, like there's just, I'm like, fuck, oh. like this is rough. But never would I ever imagine telling somebody like this, like, yeah. oh yeah, you're just, I like you, but like typically you're not, you know, yeah. your face is a little. Yeah, no, I had know? a squint yeah. hot boyfriend, like where <laughs> he was like, he had it all except up close. We were like, ooh, things were too close together. Like me. Too far apart. <laughs> He actually looked a lot like <laughs> this ugly bitch. Have I ever told you how ugly I think you are? <laughs> Finally. I've been holding it in. You make me want to throw up because it'll look hotter. Um, um, but no, but don't we it, all get ugly eventually? So that's the thing. We were like, young. We were young. Yeah. yeah. He could get better looking. Maybe men get better looking. Yeah, they do. That old age app. Remember that? That app that people, like, all the men were throwing their face in <laughs> that day, and it really, it really ages you in a convincing way. That you're like, this is the truth. I remember taking a break on social media that day because I didn't want to remind anyone I exist to maybe throw my face in that. <laughs> I remember like respecting that day, like Black Lives Matter. Like I'm taking a break. <laughs> I was like out because I'm so scared to see because it was so real looking. Those and I was like, if someone does that to me and I see it, I'm gonna like bird box i just had to uh, <laughs> i can't i will not be i'm too scared i yeah i just had as bird box when you spread your <laughs> legs like wings. i never even saw the movie but i think <laughs> you just like spread you your wings and <laughs> go on only fans you're like yeah, i'll distract you <laughs> oh shit this looks old too fuck um <laughs> those look like baby birds you know like that's kind of what your pussy does look like sometimes a baby like bird? the baby bird skin when they don't have feathers yet yes. and they're just like and they have those like black like blue eyes but their skin is mine like that. feathers <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yours don't have others. Wait, does I it have mine a beak? Worms. Mine, there's a beak. <laughs> it's my clit. It's just beak like. <laughs> it's packed a few eyes out and stay. I was forced recently to um I I had hooked up with a guy and he was we were facing the mirror and he was fingering me while facing the mirror. He was looking right at me. And I was forced to look straight into my pussy this whole time. <laughs> and I hadn't really like. Wait, how? Be, okay, so yeah. if there's a mirror in front of us, he's like sit. We're both sitting like this. Oh, you're sitting. sitting. Okay. I, I, thought you were, yeah. I was like, I thought he was just violently pulling your pussy forward. <laughs> I was like, what is that? Pulling it out. out. It was showing me. Your, your legs are weirdly suspended in air upwards. I don't know how. But I was just Very so fingers. fascinated by what my pussy looked like. I mean, I didn't mind it. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. It was shocking. No, I my, remember yeah. my boyfriend's recorded or someone I've been with before has recorded. Um, I'm trying to be more private about my relationship. <laughs> so I always go, this guy I used to date. Oh, yeah. You say your ex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. You say your ex. Aaron in the past. I have broken up with him before. So he yeah. was my ex. So my ex. Uh, would videotape like close ups or whatever, and um, and I was always like, "That's for him." Like, I don't want to see that. And one time he showed me, and I was like, "Not bad." Not bad. Uh, I was kind of proud bad. of myself. I was like, "I do have another career <laughs> like, if I ever get to that point." Well, TikTok, <laughs> uh, it's TikTok, not TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> um, yeah. I <laughs> Where are we at, ever Eddie? look at yours. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look at mine. Well, I'm like too lazy to like shape my pussy hair. So like I will just, it's either full or bald. Like that's one or the other. Mm. Manscaped, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I always get a little help from my sponsor, my AA sponsor, but also Manscaped. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I see it usually like once every month. Yeah. I see it. I check it out. I do a full shave. In action, though. In action, it's a little different. Because it, it comes, in, it comes yeah. out of its cage. Yeah, you see the whole thing. <laughs> the bird comes the out of the cage. It grabs it, brings it back in. Yeah. This yeah. show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Unfortunately, life does not come with a user manual. And for me, therapy has been an indispensable part of feeling better, um, strengthening my relationships, problem solving, all of the above. And BetterHelp um, provides just that. It is a very accessible online therapy. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Look, we're working on ourselves. We're doing it. This is, I think that's like a, a slug theme here. It's like, we're all trying to make ourselves better, like live our best lives, but it's, you know, 
things get in the way. You get distracted by, you know, ruminating thoughts. I have a lot of trouble kind of, you know, getting to sleep, but they have a journal app so I can put in the journal what's going on so I can talk to my therapist about it later. And it's just good. It's like I've had so many times where I've had a therapist I don't like and it seems like too difficult to find a new therapist. So I'll just stop going. Right. And it's super normal to feel stuck. I know that when I'm um, going through a transition in life and for some of you that are going through career changes, it is really, really easy to focus on the problem than to try and find solutions. And this is where a therapist can really be useful. These therapists are trained to help you figure out uh, the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. 30 million women are impacted by weakening or thinning hair. And if you're one of them, there's no reason to feel any shame around that. That's why today we're talking about Nutrafol. I'm impacted by Todd's thinning hair myself. <laughs> I mean, for me, right, um, when I turned 30 or when I got off my um, birth control, it was like just clumps of hair I would just see going down the drain and I would get so down about it. We and should I, sell that. I know. We, we should sell that on YouTube. Jason uh, Momoa, <laughs> we got something for you. But I don't have I don't have to cry in the shower so much anymore you know. because since I've been taking Nutrafol and I've been taking Nutrafol for the past two years, I'm telling you guys, this isn't a quick fix. Yeah. This, you know, just be patient with the process. And I promise you, your hair does grow back. I saw some comments recently that were like, does Nutrafol really work or is this a scam? I swear on my life, I went into my hairdresser and she went, oh my God, it's working. I was like, okay, yes, she's the expert. Nutrafol has three unique formulas to support women throughout all stages of life, including postpartum and menopause, which is like really important. I hear that's like a really an insecure time where you can lose hair and feel very alone, but you're not. Each formula is physician formulated using natural drug free medical grade ingredients and consistently effective dosages. So you get the most reliable results. And like Kalila said, wait. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. Like, it's not a quick fix. It actually treats the root of the issue and helps you. My yeah, my personal experience was around three months I started to see it, but just stick around for six months. I'm telling you, it really happens and. I never thought anything would work for my hair. And you can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code TRASH to save $15 off your first month's subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com, promo code TRASH. Are you you're, so you're getting action right now? No, but I have hooked up with somebody. Yeah, yeah. Not not girls yet though. She tried. Not girls, no. Yeah, but just one, one person, date. and it's been really fun. Good. Yeah, really, like really, really fun. Like fun, just keeping it casual, like just yeah, casual yeah. to a point because I have a hard time having sex with men that um, I, I there has to be a mutual like liking or fondness for each other mm -hmm. for me to fully feel sexual towards them yes um because like you can't just do like one night never things. yeah no, I, I don't have that in me i wish i could yeah me neither you were you were <laughs> okay with that what? well i wasn't okay with that. i was just blacked out drunk yeah i was on jaeger <laughs> i wasn't it, like it didn't feel it was, yeah because i want more me up with emptiness let's just say that yeah i want longevity if even if it's a casual hookup i want it to be something that i can like have for like a long period of time mm -hmm. maybe even like a situation ship type yes it, i right now was it George Kimmel told me this? <laughs> he was like, I think all you can give right now is 80%. He's like, if someone is, if you can talk, tell a dude. He marries one Asian. He thinks he's good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Thrown out numbers. <laughs> but he really helped me out because I was like trying to be like, okay, well, you know, what if like there are feelings involved, but I'm not ready for a relationship because it's so brand new off a of breakup. He was like, then you just have to be upfront. Like 80% is the max that you can give. The 20% commitment, you're just not there yet. I'm like, thank you, George Kimmel. You fucking nerd. It would be psychotic. If, I mean, people do it. 
that jump from one to. I mean, we've seen some on social media that are wild. Uh, we, yeah, we know. We I know like, like, it's like we're like the, you're in gate. Like you're like whoa. It's like meeting the parents. Like whoa. And that's like that's a personality disorder. I mean, yeah. that is a that's something. But also, it's like that person will just like those type of people just will find some, like a filler. How do they do like, it? I don't understand where people because you have to be with that person all the time. Yes, all the time, but they fall so fast and so hard and. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Like, I feel like Do you I think have, it's a narcissistic thing, though, where they're seeing how the person feels about them. In the case that we're talking about <laughs> to each other through <laughs> our eyes. <laughs> no, I think it's a deep insecurity of like needing someone to love you all the time because you didn't get enough love from your mother. But I also am like, please find <laughs> someone to love you all the time. Yeah, but find someone who's nice to you. Yeah, I don't not know. Someone the back- who you're attracted to because they're mean to you and not giving mm. enough. Like that is something, you know, I, I, I've I gone for that in the past, too. It's it's I think it's. It's so hard not to. I don't know. I don't understand people who can like people that give them enough right out of the gate. Like I had to work so hard to get to a place where like someone giving me what I want and like loving me unconditionally feels good. I know it just it do- does take a while. It does. I, well, I was I think I've said this only before, but because you know him, it's funnier. Dan St. Germain was like he was like, Annie, you always date your mom then you date your dad. Then you date your mom. <laughs> then oh you date God. your dad. Yeah. And now I just date Todd. Yeah, he's got my dad. But it was like I was like living out all of my like. It's like my dad was like the funnest, coolest, meanest, right? But mm. that would be mean. My mom was like someone mean was with sweet, you? but she was like not paying attention to me. So what is that like in a relationship? Because you're just so sharp, quick, cutthroat. Someone and, and not in a, but you're not a mean person. You can be. I know you could. Be yeah, if you wanted to be. Um. What is that like when someone's like mean back to you? Like, what it's do you- not back. They're abusive. I've yeah, had like abusive, like toxic, really mean. And I'm not. You mean shut to down on that. I'm guessing you don't. Come no, back I. They and, bring like, the fun. worst, and yeah. they bring out the worst. In also, me. like sexually, fucking. Abusive. Yeah, oh, like really God. bad. Yeah, like really, really, like wake up in the middle of night screaming, not yeah. blowing them enough. Oh shit, no, like, yeah. I'm so sorry. Not good. Yeah, but I'm not. No, I'm not mean to guys. No. Yeah, you're really My sweet man. to Todd. Anytime I'm on yeah. the phone with her, I mean, her, I call him fat. I, he, she's not talking to me. She's like, like throwing sweet nothings. At I love Todd. My Todd. Yeah. I called him today on the way over because a song came on. I would call him. I was like, oh, this song came on. It made me think about it. I love you. It's like so. <laughs> We've been together a while. That's like three years. Some, yeah, but we have frozen embryos. So. Yeah, yeah. Talking so. about the ass pimples. Oh yeah, today. Okay, so the other day, I got. I joined the. I, I we drove by an accident. And I was like trying to figure out what the accident was or what the commotion was. There were a bunch of cops. So I downloaded the Citizens app and the Next Door app mm-hmm. <laughs> to try to find out Nightmare. So lame. But I found out that in a neighborhood near mine, it's not my neighborhood, there's a drone. Someone said that they, there's a drone that's going through people's windows, like like spying on people. And I was laughing because I was thinking about it today when Todd was like fully like spreading my asshole and like popping zits like inside <laughs> my ass. I was like, this is going to be wild. Like, I hope it comes and finds me now. Wait, how does this go down? You Like, I'm naked, right? Okay. And Todd's like, bring, he'll be like, bring your ass over here, right? Oh my God. And then so like, but he'll call does it he like. he love pimping, popping pimples? Like, is he? Yeah, he'll it? like, he'll still go like, oh, I see one, you know? Yeah. And so I'll go over and it's like, you know, it's like, is this going to be like <laughs> hot or not? And, <laughs> and, and no, it really depends on what you're, so then he's like, he's like, you have to like bend over, bend over. So it's like, it's me like positioned fully and like doggy <laughs> as he's like spreading my ass and like popping my zits. Because the inside, the, the pimples are always on the usual. Yeah, it's inside. like the friction. Yeah. And right. then so there was just like full, I mean, windows open. It just would have been and the funniest just, time to see the drone. And it's just hovering yeah. outside your window and then it, you'd see it just like shake its head. Yeah, it's like, like I'm good. Mm, and then zip away. Yeah, I know. It's like a... <laughs> A guy like a fat, like nasty old guy's just like, ew. That's crazy. That's so sweet. I this past weekend I put a couple um pimple patches on my butt pimples. <laughs> That's yeah. So funny. And but what happens is that it causes the head to come out, right? Right. So it pushes the the white head out. And um, but it makes it really hard. So now you have a white head in your butt. So this morning I just scraped it off. Ooh. Left a big, big pothole, bleeding pothole. Well, I don't we'll have a Todd. I, I, I yeah. You do need you need like a handy Todd. I think I do. Is That's why you available? gotta date a plumber. You gotta date a, <laughs> Yeah, I just I, I, I listen. 
<laughs> Todd is available. He's on Task Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's good to have someone to pluck and and. I okay. Squeeze your odd areas. But you guys are super, super close. Yeah. I feel as though the last time I played that game of being just so like that close with someone, I eventually lost the traction yeah. for them. Yeah. Does that ever mm -hmm. falter? No, I feel like we get more attracted to each other as we get like yeah, it's, you guys we just like love each other. Because you get to be two friend, like just pals popping each other's zits because i like want just... my i think for me is i love like my dream like type of intimacy is that yeah, yeah but too. then i have this other side where i can easily be desensitized to someone's like skin on my skin the closeness of it all so i have a hard time um um separating the two so todd did not face. have yeah he did not have a hard time <laughs> Yeah, because but that is my dream, right? That amount of close. Me too. It is like it's like yeah, you guys. It's a building. With the door open. One hundred. I have a picture yeah. of him today and his farting. Like, yeah, he was in his Timberlands. Like, <laughs> I was like I was like, look at my working man. I took a picture of it laying his pipe, just taking a shit. I'm always like, can I post this? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I want that too. I don't have that in my relationship. He's very much like, he doesn't like toilet jokes. Like I, he doesn't like fart jokes. Like if we're watching TV and something like poop related or fart, like it's one of those things where you have to like kind of, I just get awkward for him because I know he's so uncomfortable with it. Well, <laughs> is it because his family was like too farty in front of him or never farty? Never farty. Mm -hmm. They are like very like it's, but then I am talk about doing having anal and like shitting on someone yeah. which may or may not have been him <laughs> and it's fine like the first time i remember something like that kind of happened with him because i knew his toilet humor thing his aversion to it was like yeah. so strong i thought it's over but he was so fine yeah. with it because it was you know i was uh it was an intimate moment he's he's a good person but i thought it was going to like he would never but he's you know, it's so weird that some people we can they can be so weird about like um sometimes I drop my retainer on the floor and pick it up and put it in. I don't care about germs if I don't see them. I just don't care, yeah. even though and he'll go like, Oh God, and I'm like, but you like lick my like we like yeah. make out and we like spit on each other like why yeah. is this weird or like sharing drinks or like i d drop something he's like yeah table. it makes it grosser now that i know that your fucking <laughs> yeah. mouth has been on the no carpet. it's true i mean no i don't like that like i hate like i dated a guy who was like he was like i um have a like hypersensitive smell I was like, goodbye. I want. Yeah. Oh yeah, my boyfriend got COVID. Goodbye, literally I was like, forever. Yes, yes, I know. It was the greatest his, day of my he life. Didn't get his yeah. I was like dropping so many. Silence. I threw my. I like threw my fucking pussy wipes in the trash. I like, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> started using them to clean my car. But just because <laughs> the, he's a super smeller, because I'm a super smeller. But he was like a judgy guy too. He was like a guy that was never fully letting you in. So it was like he was one of those guys like looking for an excuse to get out. And uh, yeah, was yeah, like, gross. And you're not gonna make it. I have a stinky pussy to get out. No, of this, okay, no, it's no, not gonna no. fucking happen. Gross. We're not doing this. I'm not stinky pussy bitch. We're not. Can doing you this. smell when people are like about to be on their periods and stuff? Are I you can one of those? Smell everything. What? But I'm oh, also obsessed. Oh. Where with am I in my? Cycle. Annie smells really good all the time. Yeah, she does. She definitely yeah. does. Yeah. Um, you are. We're a fair amount You of are um on your um, luteal phase. You are one week, a couple days away from your period. I am just what? starting to spot ruin these underwear. Body. <laughs> I like saw the because spot so and I was like, we'll just see how this scent. goes. <laughs> um, well, I was. For me, even though I'm like a super smeller, I love people's, like if I'm into a man, I love his body odor. Yeah. I'm really into it. Even if it's strong, mm -hmm. I'm really into it. I used that. to pick up my boyfriend's like dirty underwear and just. Oh, you sick bitch. I loved it. I love it's getting so in there. Good. Like, yeah, it smells, uh, it's, I, it's um, nice to want someone stink on you. That's when it's good when you bang your brother because there is like a yeah. lot of um, mm -hmm. laundry around. <laughs> <laughs> It's like laundry day. You're like, fuck it. I'll just grab his too. Hand me down. You're like, I remember these. Yeah, but what you were saying about um, <laughs> whether or not her um, boyfriend grew up with a farty or mm -hmm. non-farty family, I didn't know that that was a thing until um, I met my best friend when we were teenagers. And I remember I never heard her fart for like the first three years of our friendship. And then one day, like she heard my somebody fart and she was like, whoa, you do that? I was like, you can too. 
Yeah. She's like, no, I've never farted loud like in my life. Oh my God. And I was That's there nice. when she farted for the first time loudly. And we were all what? just so, like, yay. Oh my God. And that's and then, what her ass was doing too. And then now she's like the loudest farter in existence. Uh, yeah, because she's taking back the night. Yeah. She's got to, yeah. So you, some families just don't fart around each My other? mom would know. let out ass flappers <laughs> that would shake the chandelier at the neighbor's <laughs> house. Okay. Uh, it was like an earthquake hit. And it was just, like mom's farts like we're like oh another one of mom's farts <laughs> and like if one of us farted like that like my brother would be like that was like mom's fart <laughs> like, <laughs> and then i always have like a memory of my mom randomly getting mad at my brother for farting once we were like on a road trip yeah and she's like max you fart you're farting and he's like it's a bodily oh, function mom and she's like but i'm seeing you push, <laughs> you push. and i like I'm never forget it on your neck but you have to like respect the people who weren't brought up that way because it's just yes. like it's so crazy to them it's like and it is it's like polite to not just like fucking blast fucking ass smell in people's it is. life yeah because it sends particles in the air <laughs> there are poop particles let's in the just air. say i wake todd up with poop particles yeah. <laughs> like wake up Get I up. feel like once you go to sleep and you're both like on yes. each other's your phones and they could be asleep, that's when you can like let them go and the other person doesn't have to call it out. They can yeah. just hear it, but not like it's it's a safe zone. Wait, I'm and so you, sorry. Yeah. Have you ever farted in front of a guy and then they don't say it? Ha like you don't acknowledge, you move yes, forward? Yes, every That <laughs> is my hell. No, you have Like just leaving the fart to sit there and like not like, I not even like- an No, I'll just like start kicking the covers and making like, 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 uh, like, like <laughs> <laughs> so they try to make more noises so that it's like sounds like it could have been an, a, a throat just, noise. I feel like probably having my my diarrhea, constipation, back and forth, sort of ping pong of a yeah. of a <laughs> gastral system. That I think that I like have just like had to just be like, you have to accept me as I am, or we can't do this because yeah. I can't. I can't handle Well, that, I think that's what I don't censor my words. Why would I censor my ass? Right. Yeah. The first three months <laughs> of dating, I think that's the roughest part of it all is spending the night at a boy's house and then holding your farts in. Yeah. And they always, there's always something you forgot. They always come out to the car when you've just like released oh, the biggest the like worst. weekend <laughs> fart and you're like, oh, they're knocking God. on the window and you're like, it's broken. I <laughs> Had, they always, I, do. They always the, or they leave your place and they come back for something. It's oh, always God. Every always happens. And you just released it. And like there's just nothing. 18 you can hours do. of yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And I anytime I have these first weekends with a boy, if it's three, four days long, I come home with flank pain. Like the my my gas has yes. like yes. bubbled up into my lungs. Yes. Oh my Where when it's you like, breathe it hurts, yeah. it's like a stabbing, you're like, oh, ah. Oh, it's yes. so bad. I do not miss that. I do not miss beginning. And then it turns all. into poop farts because you haven't shit. Yeah, and, it, and by the time you It's like do the poop, worst fart. And you know, by the time you do poop, it alternates between gas and poop. So yes. Like, poop, gas. Okay. It's like, oh, go my God. Yes. And you can't tell. Sometimes you poop and you're like, oh, it's going to be like just a solid poop with no fart. And then at the end, there's like a trumpet <laughs> solo. <laughs> you're like, I thought this you're song like, was this over. <laughs> 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 It's just like, oh God, my mama don't like you. Oh, um, but I muffle with toilet paper. I create a muffler. No, you just have to extend your ass. I know, but sometimes so far out. Sometimes my like colon will blur. I will like, just <laughs> use I will use Todd's Even face as a muffler. I don't give a shit. I have no respect for Todd not getting. Even in the with. beginning? No, listen, Todd's younger than me. He's lucky to be around. That's how I felt in the beginning. I yeah. was like, You're welcome, kid. <laughs> But it's like, no, I mean, I, I think it was like maybe like two weeks in when it just, I just, I like, remember once my boyfriend, uh, we were watching TV and I, I guess I was just like gassy and I bur like burped, which I don't even register as like the a same fart as fart, you know, like yeah. not even a gross thing. Really? Fa like, but they smell are way so bad. So, now I do, but I think at the time I just like was too comfortable and I just, maybe I'd gone home for Christmas break and was around my family too much, which is letting burps and farts out. Yeah. Just really got too comfortable. Didn't realize I was doing it. Then I tried to like throw a move on him. And I remember he was just like, I'm not, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just, you were like burping a lot. Oh my and God. And I just, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm just not into it right now. It's not like it's, it's, it'll be fine. But like right now, and it was so humiliating, but I have kept that in check so much now. And I needed <laughs> but sometimes that. Sometimes you just... can't, you have to like cancel the night sometimes, depending on what you yeah. do, right? Oh yeah. Okay. No, I had one guy I hooked up with him the first night I hooked up with him. I was just burping. But again, it was like sort of like a, 
Like some, sometimes I date guys where I feel like I'm giving them like my week with Marilyn. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, where I'm like, yes. hey, you're welcome. You're getting this experience. <laughs> yeah. And he was one of those where I was, but it was like fully like, I mean, I couldn't help myself. Some, like, week, some women do that entire relationship where they like make up all the time, always look perfect for their husband. They never, the husband will never know the stinky side of them yeah. or like the bad, they're wearing makeup. I couldn't pull it deliver. off. It's just never. It's just, I'm not like, I'm not like crass or loud or any of these reasons like on purpose. It's just Who the energy, are. energy it would take for me to like pull back. Just, it's not. Yeah. I think I go crusty in three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Like if three weeks is my max and it's yes. like. This Cause I don't want to break it, make it too. Like I have like clip in hair. Like if a guy's coming to my house, like I'm going to be like, all right, these got to come out like this. Yeah. Like they know things are going to change. Yeah, the makeup thing I've gotten over. Like in the beginning, putting on makeup before they woke up, like you know, just just touching yourself up. But yeah, now I I I think I show that side right away because that is inevitable. But farts, I feel like I'm a mouth breather, so it's like I'm gonna be like waking <laughs> oh, them up. So like, just... <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's I've like, always wanted my boyfriend to take a picture of me sleeping, just because I think it's sweet when you're like you just admire you just watch someone sleep, and then they're like, she looks so angelic. I'm gonna take a picture because he sleeps like a little like. He seriously like has a slight smile and his lips will be closed and he literally puts his hands like this. He looks like a little, and I'm always like, he's so beautiful. He's never once taken it because I look, my face fall, Andrew, my opener is set on planes. My face falls like a quarter inch, like all the skin. <laughs> yeah. Like I, it, it's so disgusting. No, I say I look like my parents have to make like a really tough decision. By the time. <laughs> like, You're shy, Bowen. It's like literally like, uh, like the masks are the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. I put eye mask on mouth mask. My mouth, my, my mask is always down to here. I look like I have Rem a beard. Yeah, I put a Remember that though, the year Years of Terry Shivo. Oh yeah. When we just like every day we were checking in on whether or not she was gonna depart or stay. Hoping she didn't get pregnant. We're like, we can't do it. Oh my god. Oh my god. god. I did not even think of that. That's so well, fun. you know, that happened to who was it? Well, there was a movie about that, that happened called to, um It was not real. Um, I think it was a real story. Hablar con ella. No, no, no. When the there's like just a paralyzed woman that all of a sudden, or a coma woman who's all of a sudden pregnant. Oh my god. Oh my god. Who did this? That does not surprise me one bit. Actually. Listen, that's I don't mind shocking. playing that. Like that's a good role play for me. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it, but real life. Oh. What? Jezebel is the movie where that happens. Jezebel. Oh. Yeah. Oh well, don't get Jezebel. The most wonderful time of year is also the most hectic time Especially of year. if you have an online store. Yes, Esther, you gotta use ShipStation all the time. Yeah, I, I, I sell my underwear, I sell my- Your socks. I sell my um, my nipple hair. I sell Some, your nipple hair. Sometimes I sell my Q-tips and I don't even tell you which hole I put More them in. More important. <laughs> it's a surprise. If you're still using the default shipping option to run your online store, chances are you're putting up with a lot of unnecessary hassle and limiting your potential growth. ShipStation works with all of your favorite places to sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation, and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Life. So it's a good product. This holiday season, and give yourself the gift of stress-free holiday shipping. Use promo code TRASH TUESDAY today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code TRASH TUESDAY. Okay, here's what I love about Manscaped as a, like a holiday gift for your guy or for whoever. It does, it's like, it is a little bit of a like, okay, you need to do some grooming, right? Yep. But it is, there's a sexual undertone yep. to it, right? It's a call to action. Yeah. It is. And it's for, it's a call to get action. <laughs> yes. It's interactive. It's cute. It's funny. It's kind of a very ideal gift. It's a way to like get him to be more clean and trim, but like cute and yeah, But also it's like, we don't really care about you having hair. We just need to know that you're thinking about us. And sometimes that means taking your little trimmer in the shower um, using the LED light for extreme yep. accuracies and, you know, making us happy that way. And inside the Performance Package 4.0, you'll find the Signature Lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer has propriety advanced skin safe technology. And it's also waterproof so he can use it in the shower. And it's like a gift to yourself with less mess. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant, moisturizer, and toner. Keep his North Pole feeling and smelling fresh. And be careful when you put your tongue on it. You don't want it to get stuck. 
<laughs> Annie, I feel like if I was someone like you, like you have brothers, you have your dad, <laughs> like you have so many men in your life, like you're someone who would be like, oh, so easy, just get everyone man's I thought you were going to go, I feel like you're someone with a huge bush. I don't know why <laughs> I thought you were going to like come for me. <laughs> yeah, no, everyone's getting it. They call me Santa balls. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code trash Tuesday. Get your man a gift you'll both enjoy. The gift of Manscaped. His jingle balls will. Thank you. Do you think if you give it to your dad, your mom will be like, thanks, girl? I think my mom will have to do it. She cuts his hair already. She'll <laughs> probably have to be the one doing it. <laughs> They're codependent. <laughs> There's some times when a boy um, is either just a little too ripe Oh yeah, and you're but and you can be cute about it. Just be like, oh, we're gonna shower. I'm gonna like scrub you down, you stinky boy. Yes. And yeah. Then- hold your balls because I'm getting in there. Can you hold them up? <laughs> Get the Windex. <laughs> yeah, but there is a point. It's like I like your bo. I like your bo. Okay, like we've gone over. Yeah. Yeah. There's the line here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to like remember like uh, where I'm like fail. We gotta. But get I, this. there's this whole thing of like be yourself. But then there's in like I feel this conflict as a woman of like be yourself, Lizzo. Like love yourself no matter what you are. And then this other thing of like, but do all of the micro needling, do the cool sculpting, do the extensions, and like, but that's also yourself. And I'm like, but but it's also like not myself. And but if you want to do it, do it. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But I'm like, but I'm all. I only would want to do it if you want me to do it. And I want you to, is is the real me wanting people to like me more? So should I do it? Like, do you ever have that conflict? You don't seem to. You just do whatever the fuck. I do whatever the, I, you know what? My like hack is that I am, uh, I just like tell the truth. So it's like, whatever I do, I'm going to tell everyone. So I don't feel like there's no secret. I'm not like hiding anything like I think it's funny if my track show I think it's like yeah. my eyelash falls off I'm like bonus like I like that my ab, my fake abs look fake I yeah. like you know like I always make my fake tits look like really fake like I think it's funny to yes. like be playing on it but then also the the plus side is is it looks cute too yes. it's yes. like when you squint you go are those abs yeah, but I know what you mean. It's almost like even even people will admit to microneedling or getting lasers done, but not to fillers or yeah. to other parts of it because it's that's a more I don't know like a, a more uh, you know a, a real yeah shameful cosmetic procedure. But it's like it's all the same. Yeah, it, costs just it also not. doesn't like well, matter. Used to it's lie like, about their highlights. Like it used to be yeah. shameful to like. Oh, no, this is the hair I was born with. Like, they used to be yeah. shamed. It was almost like the way filler is now. Like, it's kind of acceptable, but a lot of people still lie about it. Yeah. Now highlights, no I, one hides It that. feels like the same, uh, no, you'd be a psycho. Like, yeah, if, someone, if you did that, like, I'd be like, you're fucking crazy for trying to pull this off. But I feel like just, the like, farting like and that with me is the same thing. I'm not like, I am like, just so like... You know, I'm just so honest and da da da. It's like it's too hard for me to not be. It's like almost like Asperger's a little but bit. I, yes, extra me. me too. Like where it's like I just fart and stuff because it's like I just it's too hard for me but to upkeep you, the like lies of it all. But so Todd loves that about that. you. He feels closer right. with you guys. For me, I have to basically put it up front for somebody. I burping does gross me out. Yeah. I don't want a dude, like if you're in the bathroom and I hear a couple farts here and there, but like I, I've been with someone who was just too, a little too free with it. And it took away the sexual energy between us. Especially and that's just a me beginning. thing. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's it's a correct thing for everybody, right. but I know that it zaps it out of me. And so I don't want to partake in your little fart <clears throat> yes. fest. Um, to kind of preserve my sexual feelings for you. And them respecting that boundary is like a turn on. Like it, it means like my boyfriend doesn't like fart stuff. I would love if he did, but he doesn't. Yeah, that's so just his just, thing. Yeah, yeah and I just not... respect that that grosses him out, and yeah. he can't help it. It's just a part of his fiber and who he's he is. not doing it to like keep you down. Yeah, he's it's not just doing his, his like, like truth. Like, you're or not whatever. getting the dick to yeah. me because yeah. you burped and you're a bad girl. <laughs> I feel like you that like turned that, me on. I know, I'm like, honestly, <laughs> I know, I'm like, like he's talking to herself right now. Nikki needs to be alone. Can we get a divider? I used to, when I worked with special <laughs> needs kids or kids with special needs, that we would like, there was always like an orientation before each summer. It was a summer camp that we'd, in every orientation, you'd have to talk about um, self-stimulation. And so we would, 
because the kids just start jerking off. Yeah. Oh, well, and because yeah. it was like it was like kids up to like. I thought I you were like teaching 21. them how to do it. Yeah, we're no, showing just, them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, it was like sit, yeah. <laughs> sit Indian style. Um, <laughs> rest your balls on your heels. No, um, but so um, wheel your wheelchair over here. No, but we were like, you know, we had like changing stations for them with their the mats. Yeah. And then so like the rule protocol was when they started jerking off, you can't stop them because it's like they're right. They don't realize they're doing something wrong. Right. It's like so you would just take like the mat that you change them on and just like create barricade a pod them, for them give them <laughs> <laughs> uh, my kids were higher functioning and they weren't they weren't the jerk, jerk off ones mm. so i didn't have to do when that when did you guys start jerking off uh, well i was a uh, I was Catholic, so very early. <laughs> uh, suppressed. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I had a lot of shame around masturbation when I was younger. Um, even around sex, I think um, I it, it wasn't until I was much older that I was like, oh, I can do this every day and I should be doing this every day. Yeah. But as a teenager, no. I was like, I did it. But when I did, I was like, well, what did I do? Like how shameful. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I think that is why... Annie, you were talking about female comics. Everyone thinks all we do is talk about sex. Yeah. And we're, you know, and. That, no, all that, comics. Do you just watch, if you just blindly all watch, com all comics are only yeah. talking about sex. It's, it's, it's good like, though to show the general public what we get yeah, met with because but, they don't know. But we I do can't know. go down that road anymore. I've done it. I Usually when I'm my period, I, it's like, I can't respond to these people. It's like, I create accounts to defend my but friends. But I get, I get mad. I get, I do like, it does like the women aren't funny. It's like, I, I'm like, you're trash like get away from me that pisses me off and then the all women talk about is sex it's like all guys are talking about jerking off their dicks mm -hmm. fucking like the ones that aren't are like predators that are trying to fuck the audience so they're trying to <laughs> yes. like, pretend that's not what they're doing they're like oh i don't want to remind them until right. i'm like they keep their kid shows kid friendly so that they can fuck kids yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> for a reason but, but i do feel like it's like it come, I talk about sex so much. And I'm so comfortable with it. And you, cause I just had the same thought that I'm sure people have with me when I say that I didn't have sex till I was 21. I'm scared of it. Very shamed by it. Like you, the person that's so comfortable with sex, like you seem so comfortable talking about sex, but that's so ironic that it was something that you weren't comfortable with. But of course that makes sense because now that you, once you learn, you like, Oh wait, fine. this whole time I was like ashamed of this thing. That's totally like and fine. I kind of want to talk about it a lot so that someone out there that might be as ashamed as you were and living in this like prison of like feeling just like, I don't know what's, what it is. And you just want to like get all the information out there. For it's them. like, it's like with, um, they say like, what is it? Guys think about sex every 10 seconds. But yeah. we're not supposed to fucking talk about the thing everyone's yeah, like even... thinking about and talk. It's like that's the thing that's so annoying. It's like, but guy, but April had like one of her responses was like, "Well, guys always talk about this, this, and this," and it's like, no, 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 no. They talk about sex. Yes, they do specifically. Yeah. But you guys infantilize us, and you look at us like we're objects, or we're not allowed to have like thoughts. So all you're thinking about, you're only thinking about sex. So then that's what you hear. Like I've done jokes that have nothing to do with sex, yeah, right. and they'll write that under my thing. I'm like, yeah. that's not sex. Yep. Yeah. Life, if that's sex, then everything get, in life is sex. You know, don't watch Annie's special with your kids. It's like, why would you be watching a comedy special with your kids? Yeah. Oh, get grandma out of the room before you see Annie. It's like, by the way, grandmas was, are my fucking target they now. Are, and they're the like, best. Yeah, yeah. They're, it's like, well, someone was saying this to me. I can't remember who it was. It was like, maybe your grandma it was even who Carlos. had 10 kids. Was it Carlos? Doesn't know what's like. I don't think it was Carlos. It was someone that reminds me of you. Was like, a <laughs> Carlos like. But they were like the grandmothers of now are not the grandmothers of when no. we first started. The grandmothers of now are just, just like grandma. Yeah. Like the the older the old people now are like cool as fuck. Yes, they're like mm. dirty fucking. They are healthy. like what well, my shows are so old. My yes. agent came to one show and was like, "Your audience is old," and I'm like, e "I." They're and they're cool fun. Now. I always meet people my parents' age. And I'm like, you're my fan. Like, yeah. my parents get so proud. But the, yeah, you're right. It's not when we say grandparents. We're like thinking those about, people are like gone. The ones that are, are like that are like you the greatest to to generation. Like, they're done. They're yeah. gone. And it's just it's fun. It's like and I always feel like I'm like judging if I see like an audience member that's older and I'm like, I always am wrong. They're always wrong because I'll even get like a a group that I I want to do crowd work. I find out they all met at church. They're all still laughing at all the yes, stuff. Yes, yes. I mean, my stepdad is seventy five and he watches this show. Oh, and every Raj. time, every week he texts us and he's just like, "That was just so entertaining, sweetie." Oh, uh, you know, it's so yeah. like he's a seventy five year old like they can handle it. Teacher, he can absolutely. They can all handle. Well, this. I keep calling my family with those fake boobs on. Yeah. The like. <laughs> <laughs> 
and your and family is a different story. They're, they're so, so funny. Well, open. my nieces are like my baby niece is like who's she's six now. She's like. She's like, let me see the neeps. Let me see the neeps. And then my my brother and sister are like, do not. They look too real. And I'm like, I always like flash her a little nipple. <laughs> and she's just like laughing so hard. It just cracks them up. But it is weird because they look so real. They look so real. It's crazy. The comedy store the other night was wild. I'm so glad I don't have big boobs. I on, I know exactly why you got your tits taken out. Wait, oh, tell me. You. what What did you experience? It's a different. Yep. I'm Talk so, so happy this is what I was given. Because they're so real. Overcome. You can see what how guys treat you. It was too much. Is it nice at all? And Cla you can no, talk it's to this nice. Like, are there were there when you got yours taken out? Did you see the perks? Um, so the the, the the upside was um, obviously I, this was a time when you know I was still drinking, doing that. So it's like the male attention is heavy, but it's the wrong kind of male attention. Mm -hmm. It's not the male attention that I seek. And usually if I go to a bar and if I hit it off with somebody, there is something more than just, like usually I have to like find my way or like I usually, there's a conversation that sparks it all and they're like, oh, I like that girl because she said this one thing about this one. No, it was like just my tits, my, my tits. It's my like tits, wearing glasses. Tits. It's like they go yeah. glasses girl, <laughs> like, like tits girl. Mm -hmm. It was crazy though. Like Jeff died. I didn't even realize he hasn't spoken to me in three years <laughs> until I was wearing those tits. He was like, I know they're fake, but it still works. He was like, Opening doors, right? People were like rolling out a red carpet for me. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but it made me like so appreciative of the amount of attention I get without tits. I was like, wow, this feels like real. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I, awesome. I feel really uncomfortable when I have cleavage because I feel like it's creating, and this is so me kind of, uh, I'm embarrassed to say this. I feel bad creating a just like mm -hmm. creating something that men have to like fight to look at. It's a disturbance. Like I feel bad for them that they are like being drawn to it and they can't. It's like, yes, I don't, they're, I don't it's like, full restraint. You're surrounded by people that aren't being themselves, that aren't being yes, open. Yes. Like I was talking to like a couple of my married friends. It was like Benji and um and uh Ryan O'Neill. Yeah, you just got married. Oh my god, that's so weird. Thank you for not inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that makes I'm me like feel annoyed so good. I didn't get to reject it. <laughs> I would have said no, but no. But I was like talking to them and and at the comedy store the other night with it, and I was like going as a nip slip, so I had like the nip out, mm -hmm. and I was like, you can look at it like this isn't cheating, but like how is it? It's like so because they're so real looking. Everyone was like, can I grab them? I was like motorboating Joe Urell, the comic with cerebral palsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like really, um, it was just, it was, but you're right. It's like, it was like, um, yeah, like throwing like a grenade and being like, you can't look at the yeah. explosion. I, and I, even even for women, like I know I can't. If someone oh, if their cleavage is out, I'm looking. Me too. Straight into it, probably longer than the man. Like I'm really looking yes. at it intently. Well, when did you get yours? Not out. When did uh, you get them in? Twenty eight. And what made you get them? Um, my sister had just gotten them mm -hmm. at that time. I was um, I had but the last person that I dated before that was a Spanish footballer, and um, he loved girls with. Boobs. Okay. Yeah. And um, mm. so when that relationship ended and I started and that whole summer, I decided that I was just going to get them. This is somehow this was going to be my hot girl season. Mm -hmm. And then I started dating Bobby. And I remember I had already made my appointment to get my boobs done. And he was like, I will pay you the exact amount of money you're about to pay to not get them done. Um, but in my head, I You're like, let's split the difference. I'll only get one. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember I was like, he doesn't mean that he's a guy. Like he's just saying yeah. that to be this like sweet guy who, but it turns out he really does like, um, small breasts. So I got them anyway. Yeah. And as soon as I woke up, I, 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 I cried right into my double oh, really? D's. I'm like, I hate these. I hate these. I hate the way my body looks with this. You never oh, enjoyed that. Mm -mm. I think I, I, I took them out um, at a year and a half or under two years after. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. It was like, I, they were in there fast. And so probably like my knowing that you were going to have to get them redone again is probably so daunting to know that you're going to have to go through it again. It's oh, not like yeah. you have to do it once. Yeah. You're just like, it's fuck it, some point maintenance, again. like buying a house. But yeah. also yeah. my body just fully rejected it. I started feeling all of these weird symptoms. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel good in my body. And I generally, I, 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 all the clothes that I loved being in, 
I could no longer wear. I had to change my entire wardrobe and I wasn't yeah. this like cool tomboy anymore. I usually like baggy shirts. Like I just had a look to me that I could no longer yeah. be. So what your idea of what you thought it would be, was there anything that you invented in yourself wearing or like doing in that kind of like bikinis or anything that yeah. you, did you take advantage of that at all? Yes, I did. So like I I remember feeling like oh I don't ever have to wear a bra, so I never wore a bra. That yeah, was they're so taut. Right. They were like, just and if yeah. I could just wear a white oh, shirt, know, my nipples so out, good. you know. So I had that freedom. That's I think what I was chasing. But I remember when I took my implants out, and I my boobs were back to normal and soft and a little bit you know saggier. Mm -hmm. I liked the look better yeah. without a bra. They were up here, they were tight. They were high and tight, I hated them. Mm. Um, I look back at pictures now and I'm like, that is not me, like yeah. that is not me. Recovery, was that brutal? Because yeah. I feel like we just don't even, when when women get their faces done or um, liposuction or these, or, or get your tits on, they, they're so shamed of doing it. I mean, some some of them are like before and after and it just seems like instant, but that mm. the recovery is so brutal, right? Like yeah. just the blood and the pain and like I having know. to walk around and like, especially women getting their faces done, they don't talk to anyone about it. I've had friends do it and they, I just had like vocal cord surgery. I need, and it, there was no blood. It was, you know, not painful, but I needed so much support around me to get through that. Time when did you have it? Um, two months ago. How hard was it to not talk? It was awesome. I mean, oh, you liked it? It was I would awesome. never be able to do it. It was so hard. Were you like the like the mom. dad in Legends of the Fall where you had like a Anthony oh, Hopkins? Oh, <laughs> you're like, oh, oh my god. Oh, oh, I don't know. That oh, scene where he shock. writes down, I'm happy. Oh, oh my god, god that makes me cry. I don't even know. You had didn't watch this? No. Legends you of the You are gonna no. die. Nikki, you okay. don't know Tristan? I'm like no. wet right now. Just really? thinking about it. Is that the one where Brad Pitt's the hottest dude ever? Someone that kind of looks like you. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I have to think that. Okay. Sorry. It's so crazy that you're Isabel. I know. Yeah, yes. We're so her. Okay, I have to. Know. I don't like remember the so, well, This scene. is why we're like pretty sure she's gonna end up dating Brad Pitt, but it's fine. <laughs> oh my god, yes. We are pretty sure it's gonna that happen. That makes so much. Sense. I don't want to brag, but everything I say comes true. <laughs> Wait, don't give me another alcoholic. No, I you don't. Not, no, he, I, I don't think he drinks anymore. That you, no. Oh, that. I would wish that for you for like a couple, like a few. No, months. just so I can be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I need to be it's right. not your. It's not your husband. Right, right, right. But or I feel like, like j just, yeah, a lot of people get, have, go through these surgeries and they don't, they go through it alone because they're so shamed and they can't be like, if I have a facelift, which I'm going to have at some point, I'm going to be like honest about it. Tra like, yeah, you know, there's no what, why yeah. uh, create content about the recovery. But I think that we, I wouldn't have known. Did you know how, was it that painful or am I exaggerating? Like, did you know the recovery was going to be what it was? Were you the, prepared for it? Um, Pain? Yeah, no, I think that everyone is like, oh yeah, you can you can get back to work in two days. Is that what they tell you, right? Well, you knew from your sister probably what it was going to be oh, like, yeah. right? Or did um, you guys do it two days apart? No, my recovery was <laughs> rough. Like my my blood pressure dropped a couple times. Like I just didn't, my, my body didn't take to it like uh, yeah. maybe other people. Did you regret it right away? Were you like, fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Immediately, I was like, something's not right. And especially with Bobby being like, don't do it. Like you had someone that right. was like there telling you not to. And then can you like, imagine oh. getting your, like... Tits is one thing and like regretting that that's got to like you crying into them. That's such like a scene At least you could get them removed and it could go back to normal But like doing something to your face and then yeah. waking up and being like no well, Like that's why the filler nose so jobs. I'm like ladies filler nose jobs also filler, like yes filters on look at my nose Yes filters on TikTok, baby. Like, I think it's very brave for contour women to bitches. that stuff And I feel like we shame a lot of women for getting work done But sometimes I'm like that girl took a fucking it is a risk, risk. And, people get it back. and people go what did Meg Ryan do to her face? Why would she, she didn't want to look like yeah. that? <laughs> she she got some bad advice. No one told her. No, it went too yeah. far like she's just trying to she's trying Trying to look like she did in Sleepers in Seattle. She's trying to get that back. Don't. But, yeah. but, but I think men especially. Oh, and especially when they find out their girlfriends want to get stuff done. They go, no, because they think of they see those bad plastic surgeries and go, yeah. don't do this. And it's like that woman didn't want to look like that. We're all trying to stay young for you. It's like, better if you just don't say anything. But to also, them. I'm not going to know. They're going to be like, oh, my girl, just, I feel she's like aging grace. They, they don't know. know. I have they don't know. Everything. But they start to get so threatened because they think you're trying to get hotter for someone else. And it's like, <laughs> it's not about that. I want to be perceived as hot, but it's not to fuck other people. I just want people to be like nicer to me. Well, the culture was <laughs> like, like the, cul the of younger girls now is like all the like preemptive or whatever. What are they Oh, called? yeah. It's um, the uh, um, preventative. Pre preventative uh, yeah. Botox and stuff. So it's like everybody looks looks like but if you were 70 when they're 70 is the new 20 this is yeah. insane. I mean, it's like true. who cares it's like it's just like 
It's just like the look now. Like but I don't think it looks better. Or, like it's just like you it just is. Look like it's a lie one. because if you look at pictures of yourself when you're 11 and 12, we've always had these wrinkles. Yeah, yes. I've never not had these. Like all of my younger, pictures I've always have yes it. always have had this. Yeah, so xylophone. now it's like you have people telling you that oh no, it's preventative. Take these out, and I'm like, wait, no, they're meant to be there. They've been there since you were a child. I'm yes. just like, where? What's taking up the slack? Like if we shaved our heads, like all the girls with Botox just have like wrinkles. <laughs> in, like, their... I always like, think about my nose. Like... If I got my nose taken down, it's you like a tent pole for my else. face. Like it's pulling the skin up. To keep it tight. <laughs> if I do this, the it will drop. Like no, I, I want to build up. But your face has to. More. Your face has to have like a certain. T- I always feel like you have enough, like the same amount of face meat, right? So like when you see a girl oh, that's yeah. like or a guy, like I can I see nose jobs just because my. One of my brothers had a. Oh, I see them. On the, yeah. I can see them. I always can, I can tell. see them. Is that like my the proportions out? Is that like my collapsed nasal valve? Yes. Oh, oops. <laughs> I just see them because they're always tiny and they have a little. Whoop. Yeah, they do whoop. like uh like there's like a ski slope situation, yes. but uh, which it looks cute, but it's like you got to put that meat somewhere else. You got to go on the chin, the cheek, mm, somewhere. Like, that's interesting. I feel like the same amount. Like you can just move it to different areas. And when you take fill. It off. Your skin has gotten the reason that you're getting wrinkles is because your skin is getting looser. Yeah. Okay, so oh. then when you fill, it's this, it's just you have it, your face gets big because yeah. it's just filling out the more skin. So that's why women's faces just get huge with filler. So you gotta you gotta watch it. But I I mean I I do filler and stuff. I got like t- like right when I smile, there's like a dent here. I can't. I saw it on the tiger belly video and i'm like i can't deal with it there's a dent but i think right there everyone from eventually gets that dent. you get oh. i don't know I if it's it. natural or not but like I it's it. i need to get it like filled in but when they go in they fill it that i think it's because you and i like you're cheeky i'm cheeky as well so we get this little like um, it's yeah dimple right here yes yeah but it's i don't know it's you feel I feel great whenever I get stuff in my face. I'm like, you're so brave. You took a, sh- a shot and it like worked out. And then a couple of days later, I'm like, oh, why did you do that? Do you, you notice older. like if someone else has like a dent or something? Oh, I I know everyone yeah. and what they've done. I've I would what have, have I thought done? you've do- had stuff done, but you are just like a gorgeous person. I would think if I didn't know you and I just saw you, I would think you've had cheek filler, but not a lot. And I think you'd have a maybe a chin job, Ooh. Ooh, like a, a chin. chin, like a chin sharpening. I actually have like a scar from my my scooter accident have you ever had any filler or anything mm. wow no, but she made a good already. point because she has um she doesn't make a lot of big facial expressions like, I'm like ever Asperger. yeah you are kind of like <laughs> you are you're like sociopath everyone no you're like yeah. you're mean to all your i'm like no i literally have like no, a, you just a, have sem- a resting like I, yeah yeah i just i have a resting face yeah I have a resting <laughs> my dad called me a bitch face <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my dad was yeah. mean okay he's very nice now yeah Kim Kardashian um, never like does not smile, and right. I, I remember hanging out with a Jennifer Lawrence once, and she like was like, "Stop, stop making me laugh!" Like and holding her face so that it wouldn't. Oh my god! Uh, see, I don't yeah. want to live like that. I don't want to. I, I had. But um, you look great on camera. That's all that matters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for adding one. Camera. No, but I mean, no, no. I'm just oh, saying, I'm like, just like you are in this like world. Like you're maybe not like the movie star status yet, but you're like you're like hosting these Netflix shows and stuff, and you're like on. And you look great. So it's like, isn't, is that what you Telegenic. I'm not photogenic, but I'm telegenic. I mean, I, I think you're photogenic too, but I'm just saying like, you know what I mean? Where it's like, like she seems so worried. Like I, we were talking about to Sosie Bacon about how she was in Smile and she's like, her the whole movie's her face. Yes. And she's like, it was before I got Botox. But I'm like, no, because she's being an actress. Like if she had had you Botox, it would have been weird. Yeah. Face. And she's screaming. I mean, the whole th- part yes. is like, it's a, a close up of her face screaming. Yeah. So it is just like, what's the, what's the move? Mm. Hey, my friend. Oh, my friend uh, told me that she heard somewhere or maybe she just noticed that great actresses, especially Jennifer Lawrence, speaking of never blink in scenes. And that's the, that's how to be a good actress mm. is that you just never blink because I blinking just kind of makes you look nervous and like you're out of your element. You're like, what's my next? I'm going to start trying. That that's no why auditions. I can never be an actress. Like I have excessive oh, well. blinking. You do? Yeah, 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 yeah. When I even if there's like a, a s- tiny thought in my head, I, my eyes start to go like this. Oh they, my god, that's how me. we know you're thinking shit about us. <laughs> they, they, oh, she's blinking again. She's <laughs> head talking shit about me. What do they call me? Like somebody, like somebody wrote something. They were like, they called me like Blink One Eighty Three or something. Like that. <laughs> Blink the 1980s. number of times you blink in a minute. Been five. Was blink so 1985. Funny. <laughs> Which, is that what you're here for? 84. 84. Yeah. Blink 1984. Blink 184. It was so funny when I read it. I'm like, they're so right. I'm I just an exception. Blinky's hot dogs. 
um, blinker. So I really, really, um, I'm always in awe with people like who can just maintain. I also am not great with eye contact. Like I have to reset, reset. Yeah. Well, do you say, um, do you say filler words a lot? I say like and um, um all the time. Too. All the time. And me I'm too. done n trying to not do it. I'm, I think it's a way to dismiss women again. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a way all they say are like, it's just a thing that you hear women. Well, here's the thing. The reason lot. why saying like, and, um, is, a negative thing is because you're not sounding like concise and to the point, but you guys aren't listening to us anyway. So who cares? You don't like, <laughs> you don't like what we're saying. So bye. It's, and it's for people, we, t I talk fast. Mm -hmm. And if I talk fast, I got to put in likes because I'm not, you know. No, I you and I are, we're on I'm like not the good speed, at doing speed. stand up like this. And taking my time with a punch, like I have so much respect and also disdain for comedians who just don't care about getting laughs they can just take a really long oh, time to yeah. get to a punchline and tell a story and take someone through a moment and we know exactly really, who you're talking really about. oh I, I don't even know who i'm talking about i can just think there's just so many people who just go did you do like a half smile there no, I swear I don't have anyone in mind. But I think it's most comedians. I mean, it's even Chappelle. I mean, Chappelle has a right to do whatever the fuck he wants at this point. Uh, well, Chappelle takes the pause break so he can slap the mic on his knee. Yeah, but it's <laughs> I'll do it. I'm not above a knee slap. Like, I just I'll do can't it. Do it because I I'm just, and I'm I really wish I could take more t time on stage because I think audiences will go for, with you if you're captivating enough. I mean, you don't. No, you want to go at your own speed. But you I like change your speed. I need to like laugh because every I'm second. Not, do you feel like you're like perform? Like I'm going up like as myself saying things. Yeah, that's like people that are like doing a a show, which a lot of people I can't are. Stay on shows, but it's like you're doing a show. Like I would be so unhappy doing a show of just doing it the same way. Or you every time and always getting a little bit <laughs> whimsical yeah. oh, at one yeah. point. I, oh, but at the this every made time. me laugh. Like I said it for the first time yes. when I said it literally. Like every I hate night. Broadway shows. It's yeah. too rehearsed. I don't like rehearsed. I remember when I first started comedy. So I started like hanging out with a specific group of people. And one of the guys I hung out with, he was like had been in comedy maybe four years when I started. And I was I went to two shows in a row and I couldn't believe it when I saw him go like what's that word two times in a row and I was like what is what did you do why are you doing that and he was like well you know it gives the audience like it makes them feel like you're coming up with it right then which is like I guess brilliant in a way right? yes yes and it did work he did like kill but I'm like you don't do comedy anymore because you probably wanted to die doing that every day yeah I, I want to I'm Whenever just like I have great. to get enter into any kind of like and like I had this bit about you know guys saying that like dating younger women and being like well she has an old soul and I really when I wrote yeah, it it was funny. I was like furious at old, older men saying this yeah. and so it, like I wrote it with a lot of anger then I went through a stage where I was just like I don't care these let people be with who they want but when I did my special I like something happened that day earlier with like a guy older guy that with a younger girl that I just I don't even know what it was but it enraged me and I was able to access that I didn't have to fake it that night on stage and it felt so yeah. good and then it God, I was even more mad about it, but it is hard when you write a bit that is like r really written in like anger. And then you kind of get, you, you work through it. So it. Yeah, you're like, and you're like I'm I don't, to the other end so of it. It's so lame to be mad about this now. I have a question. So I remember hearing, I don't remember where it was, but someone had asked you like, they're like, oh, you're coming back to this place. Is it going to be the same set or whatever? Like, what's the set? And you were like, I, it's going to be, you're like, I'm pulling from several hours of comedy. Like, yeah, it was something. Does that, do you remember saying that? I mean, it's like true. it could be like, well, yeah, me too. I mean, yeah, yeah. But like, I would, when do you start when you're going to do a special? Cause I have to do a special soon. It's like, yeah. when you do a special, how far ahead of time are you going? Like, I'm locking these oh, jokes. So on. embarrassing to answer. I mean, honestly, it varies, but because I, I want to die so much on my life. Well, when I, are you taping? It's not fun. When you, when you, I don't have the date yet. Well, when you get the date, I'd say like, I lock, I would lock mine. Like, I didn't lock it minutes before and then yeah. change it for the second show because i can't i can't like survive in a just like saying the same mm. it sucks i it's not fun you like a month before you start like maybe thinking about what works and then dropping the things that you're like it's a c it's not gonna become an yeah. a in this amount of time stop fooling yourself that this joke that's been a c for five years is gonna finally find it yeah ways. and then you start just doing all the a stuff even though you're bored of it or a b and then 
you make a set list like I don't know like a week before and then yeah. I just run it a ton and I have like an iPad on stage and I just follow it to a T to time yeah. it out and then have friends come see it and then help tag it out and then you'll come up with news and then it'll and then it feels fresh because you have like new stuff because yeah. I just cannot going on the road it's like people can come see me you can stay the whole weekend you're not gonna see you're not gonna show. see the same set yes same for me I, yes. it's gonna be totally wild you have i have no clue what's happening i don't know what i'm gonna say what, sometimes i, I am gonna laugh at my own jokes because i'm like oh that was fun yes what just came out if i laugh at my own joke it is genuine yeah it i'm really cracking is. myself up over here yes and <laughs> uh, that's what i like about watching you too it's like it's just there's no performative and i know that a lot of people do like that in their com comedy they want to go see a show they like they yeah. don't mind it to have a performative quality but i also think that they don't know that it's performative i think that person is tricking them and yeah. i want people to be better purveyors of comedy is that the right word like i want people to be a little bit more savvy when it comes to comedy and not get tricked by the the mm. the fake the like, laughing at your own joke the the thing of like oh, what's that word the what was it it was on the tip of my tongue oh, this happened this morning those kind of things speaking like, of tips of your tongue why were we talking about the tip of the tongue yeah like, oh god or or flubbing like I've done we've all done this where you flub a joke and then you in the moment you make like a funny joke off of that and you're like oh I'm gonna have to recreate that moment and yeah. so you, if I do that I will make it very obvious that that's it will be yeah. so rehearsed looking that I feel like I I hope the audience knows yeah. that that is not me faking right. it. But I just want people to be more savvy. But I think but anyone then also, who watches your shows is a savvy. But don't you feel thing. like, but don't you feel like too when you're like feeling, like sometimes I just have to go, let everyone do everything they want to do. I know you. Because you, last week we were talking cool. about how, did you see the article that was like making, it was like talking shit about all the guys doing, talking about their kids in comedy? No. It's like, let them talk about their fucking kids. Yeah. Like, then I'm like, what was their point about it? Like that they were that it's like, like too earnest or something. It's like, you don't decide. Like they have an oh, earnest yeah. moment. Who cares? I like I'm your so thing of like, you. no, no, no. You saying, just let them do it. Like who can, don't police anyone's stand Cause it is like, it's always like a time. I'll, I'll be honest. I get jealous of performative comedy because I can't do it. It's too I hard. Can't. ADD. It's ADD. too much work to come up with a script. And like, those are people that sit down and memorize lines and work and then listen to their set afterwards. And I'm jealous. Of I've taped every it. set. And so I'm shaming it so but that do I don't you, have to do it. But Nikki, do you ever feel like, do you, cause I feel like, cause I have ADD. It's like, I always have this sort of like the grass is greener or like tomorrow I'll figure this out. Yes. So I always am like, maybe there's going to be a time where I figure out just the sitting down and writing <laughs> no. stuff and not just be like, blah, 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 and then like, oh, shit, that worked. OK. Yeah. I, I've I taped have every set. I have taped every single set and never listened to a single one. I have thousands of hours on my phone, uh, say hard drives, never will listen. I always tell my parents, like, if I die put out that stuff, like have someone go through it and put that out as like the lost tapes. How sad would it be if it's just all the same set? You realize like you really have only been doing the same set? Like if you go to like a set from 2012 and you're like, oh God, oh, fuck, am I still doing that? How'd that happen? I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. Um, Sorry, this is boring. No, I wasn't no, like no, saying- not, no, no. No, it's fine. No, like, you like, got finally bit. escaped. Oh my god! You escaped I know you comedy. Got away from I escaped. People talking about this. We are. When I look at Olivia Munn, I'm like, how did you get roped into this? <laughs> like Olivia, you're on the road. Like you're Olivia Munn. Run! What are you doing? <laughs> I forbid my openers from talking to me about stand up on the road. Like <laughs> I, I hate talking about stand up so much, and it's it doesn't seem like it from this conversation. But I hate going over a set and being like, I think this really worked. <laughs> what about this tag? Like I. Male comics, I think, really enjoy doing. Well, that remember what we were talking about. I was I was talking to the comic store. I'm like, I there's so many of my comic friends I just saw from New York that I haven't seen in a while, and it's like, I, it's been so long since I saw them that I'm like, what do we talk oh, about? Yeah. Like, I was like, I don't even know what like you like. I don't even know how to like please you. Like, what compliment do you want to hear? <laughs> Like you in LA, it's like say, nice shoes. Did we all know? just want to fuck each other? And now that yeah, we're we we all just like, like we have flirting or something. <laughs> yeah. Now we're all like married and like not into each other. It's yes. Like everyone got fat. It's like, yeah. But it's, but then I realized what the New York male comics want is they want you to go like, I really like when you use that word instead of that word. <laughs> and yes. I'm pleased to the timing. And you went, it was really on rhythm. <laughs> like I can't. Yes. I found I can out. I give you one yeah. of those. I could give you one. I just, I've, I've barred it. Like my, my friend Andrew, who, 
would open for me and I do a podcast with, he knows like, don't be like, did you, did you think I should do this line? Or like, I just go, why would you ask? I'm also like, I don't did you think I watched your set? <laughs> <laughs> he knows that I don't either. I'm yeah. like, if, if you ask me to watch your set, I'll watch one minute of it, yeah. you know? And this could be you're doing a, a whole hour. I am, so when people hard. go, I'm sorry, other comics, I'm sorry I haven't seen your special. I'm like, ew, why would you watch it? Like you're a comic, <laughs> no, no offense. So like crazy. I do, I'm just getting back into watching people stand up and it is good to do because you realize, like you realize how important, like, how good the art form is. And I forget, cause I think I was jaded for a while, but you are like, man, this is actually like, I get it now. It's yeah. weird to, but there are people who, and, and I heard the thing of like, would you ever listen to a musician that's like, I don't listen to music? It'd be like, ew, no, I would never. So that's, that kind of sounds like Bobby. He never watches um, comedies at yeah. all. Yeah. Like any funny movie. So everything oh. he watches is very dark. So horror is his number one genre. Mm. That or like super that is like so sci-fi. Did he see Terrifier too yet? No, I don't think so. We were supposed to watch Barbarian Oh, Barbarian last was week. good. You like um, horror stuff? Mm -hmm, I like gore. Really? I like slicey slices. Oh bloody, my bloody. god. But no rom-coms, nothing where Remember when Jake Gyllenhaal was like a half man and his appendix were coming and his What's that oh, one? In the train movie? What was that train movie? Oh, yeah. And at the end he was just like <laughs> Source code? Oh, he was just like, oh. he was just like you could see his intestines. <laughs> he looked like a genie. What do you guys, <laughs> what do you guys think of um laziness apparently being a myth? To call okay. someone lazy is not a thing. Mm -hmm. That um, what 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 are they saying about it? Um, that it's actually very detrimental to call someone lazy. It's usually it's like a human made. It's a it's a it's a pure. Our jokes aren't lazy. Myth. Lazy. Remember that laziness is a puritanical myth based on the sin of idleness and used to oppress people into forced labor. You either need rest, more inspiration or are denying yourself something you want because a part of you feels like you don't deserve it. Mm. Well, she seems like she was a little lazy with that brush, huh? <laughs> brush your hair, bitch, huh? A little comb? Come on, we're looking at you. Laziness is like, it's it's the thing of, um, no one's ever deemed themselves lazy or been called lazy and felt inspired to do something right. about it. It always makes you more lazy. It makes you go into shame. Mm -hmm. Like what I always think about when I was kind of doing eating disorder recovery and they were talking about binge eating, like if you go on a binge and let's say it gets out of control and you kind of stop and you go, oh, I'm such a piece of shit. I ate like, th you know, 20 cookies when I only wanted one. The shame that you feel about those 20 cookies is going to make you eat the rest of the bag of right, cookies. Right. Whereas if you just go, woof, yikes, looks like I needed 20 cookies. I'm going yeah. through something emotionally. You could stop at the 20 cookies. Right. So like, I think the laziness thing, when I call myself lazy, it's it's cutting. It's like to hurt me more. Right. It's never going to, calling someone lazy has never gotten any. We have a to flashback work. to earlier. Ding, ding, ding. Just like the devil's, like remember the yeah, devil's like, yes, I Oh my know. god, I want to play yes. with them so much. But devil's I truly don't like, think if you think about it, Ron no one Babcock is lazy. Is like an excellent. Do you remember? Of him? course, he Ron Bab Babcock is like a number one devil stick or something. What is a devil stick? So you know batons. devil stick. I don't know you devil stick. You devil stick, bitch. Okay, you know you did. there are two <laughs> batons and then there's one long one in between that you like hit back and forth. And, and you go it back kind and of forth. has like- And you can throw it like, up in there. Like dreadlock hair, hair like kind of. When, when? Yeah, there you go. I've never seen this in my and life. And you catch yes. it. It's oh, like you're having you your own like dirty dancing. It's so fun. Oh, that's, oh, that seems fun. It was, it was fun. I'm no, camp, I was always like, oh my God, he's such a good devil sticker. Yeah. But Ron Babcock's still good at it. It's like, do you guys feel so lazy? Sad. Like, do you feel like, because I feel yeah. like I always call myself lazy and people go, you're the least lazy person. I go, you don't know. You don't know that it looks like I'm doing a lot from right. like my tours and podcasts, but that's. I'm pretty sure I have some form of dysautonomia, like, like, like they call it POTS, like postural orthostatic, like hypotension my mm. blood pressure drops that was a lot a lot of mm -hmm. words for me to look but it's up called later. pots and it's basically i feel chronic fatigue and i have to fight it every day every time i work oh. out it's like this battle in my head and i've always shamed myself for being like why don't i want to just get up is that what that, why they call marijuana pot because <laughs> it Probably. gets you pots <laughs> um i think i have some milder version of it and um how do you get through how do you motivate yourself to work out when you are she's just that? A hot is it mental no she mental. has a habit of it oh, no wait can i say bad what habit, i think habit. pretty bad though no but you okay so in your blood because she was raised as an athlete and she was like the mm. the meal ticket for the family mm. so they're like 
swim, bitch, swim. So this is just me imagining. I didn't know you were a swimmer. Yeah, yeah, she was a swimmer. College and through college. Yeah. Wow, girl. She was, was like the stroke? champion. I was a 200 meter butterfly. Were you a swimmer? Wow. I mean, just in high school. I was a swimmer. I was, really? Mm-hmm. Yes. I love, I miss it. I started to get good at butterfly and then I got in a car accident. I'll get you oh, back there. Shit. Butterfly was like, I was like, once I started to get the rhythm of butterfly. That's my party trick. You can bust as an adult doing butterfly at a pool and just go. <laughs> yeah. And but then your tit it's falls out and then so everyone loves it. It is because you're like, oh, it's, it's just like one of those too- motivational posts. <laughs> that's like 16 that's coming over a CEO. Just I had those posters. Yes. But I think that um, the trick with butterfly is not in your arms. It's your leg and you have to have a strong second it's kick. It's like the rhythm oh. too. Right? Yeah. It's but like... if you if you kick once, your second kick has to come. Like yeah. it's not a one kick, oh. one, you know, one pull, one kick, one pull. It's one kick, pull, second kick. So I'll get you there, Annie. Anyway, so her mom was. With you guys. Um, yeah, I. But so I think you got the habit though, mm-hmm. and like in your head, your identity. This is just like all my hypnosis stuff. Mm-hmm. Your identity is of an athlete and someone who exercises. So you're gonna feel like so bad if you don't exercise, right? Like how often really hard do you horrible. exercise? Um, I've been pretty bad in the last couple months. But bad I've for been, me is not that bad. Right, but bad is probably like three times a week, which is average. And when right. I do work out, it's like uh, I'm I'm working out. Like I'm not. Just, what are you doing? I'm I'm lifting. She I'm making sure that I break a sweat. Are you like I've two worked out with Annie. In the gym? No, 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 no. Okay. But if I can, conde- if I'm doing 30 minutes or 45 minutes, it's going to be a hard consistent. 30, it's you're not taking breaks to just like walk no. around, strut around. No, which I'm trying to change. I'm trying to be easier on myself because I'm like, what is the point of all of this? Why like, this is dreadful? Yeah. Yes. So I'm trying to find ways that are like, you know what? If this is a 30 minute workout, but I can pause, and even if it takes me an hour and a half to get through it, mm-hmm. at least I'm being right. nice to myself in the process. And you do you feel more energized after you do it? Like, Love it. it I'm right? happy. I, I make better decisions. I'm nicer to people. I'm nicer to um, in my relation. I'm, I'm more content in mm, my relationships. Yeah. It's 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 really fucked up and psychological. But I am so chronically tired to the point where sometimes I just it's hard for me to immediately res- respond to emails. Yes. Respond to text messages and they sit there and I'm like, why can't I just fucking reply to this? Well, we know that Bobby has the same problem, but we know it's not from exercise. Okay, why? When did you get di- diagnosed with this? Because I feel like I relate. I'm relating to this so much of just like. My boyfriend comes home from work and he wants, he's been working all day longer than goes to work before me. Right, right. And then he gets home and he's like, let's go shopping for that blanket you wanted to get. Let's go to the, let's go, let's go for a walk to the beach. Let's go. And I'm like, how do you want to, I wish I was someone who wanted to do these how, activities. Exactly. So I'm like, you have your dogs? No. Because dog walking too, that's the thing that like I have to Saved do. Save my it. life. And yeah, it's like, I have to do it. Good. And then I, I made a decision where I was like, I, I, when my boyfriend asked me to go out for a walk with the dog, I always say yes, even though I fucking want to just lay there. Yeah. And he's always like, you can lie. And I'm like, no, cause I want to go. And then the dog like wants us together. It's cute. Yeah, but it's, it's like, happy. so I just have to like force. And then once I do it, it's fine. And I actually have more energy for yeah. later things, but it is like, it's not, I think for me, all of my laziness is procrastination. It's all like yes. some fear of something on the other end of getting work done. Maybe, or that. I try to think of it. I'm like, what is happening here? But even when I procrastinate, but truly like my body does just, it wants to like be one with a bed. Yes. Like I just cannot get up. And like you're saying where it's like your boyfriend comes home and he's still energized to do more things. I'm like, how? Well, he's been holding all those how? farts and he's got <laughs> extra gas. How? He's ready to go. Just I like, really do envy people who wake too. up and then get shit done because I work well in 50 minute increments mm. in big bursts mm, of that's time. That's nice to know. And it's a good amount of time too. Yeah, you 15, get so much time. And then I need I need a break. So like when I have meetings with George or the guys, uh, after 50 minutes, there's a glaze that comes over yes. me and I'm just tired and I'm I've completely checked out. And I need to go lie in bed like yes, this. Yes. And have my phone like like this and put on white noise and just go like oh and yep. it's bright and beautiful outside and there's a friend that wants to go to lunch with me and I'm like I can't I just need But how hot is she? <laughs> you know? Still a friend Does who she take to, to the Korean, Korean bar, bar huh? Yeah. Like sometimes I look at you and I'm so envious of like how much you can get done in a day. Like you're up and at them in the morning. You- That's so weird that people see you in the exact opposite yes. way you see yourself. Yes. And I think That's you're right saying. because people see me as like always busy. I yeah. would think the same thing. But you know what it is? It's because we don't reward our wins we highlight our failures to ourselves and it's huh. like bonnie mcfarland gave me the best advice the other day it was like so weird and so like it seems like bad advice but because i do wake up so early a lot in the day it becomes a problem where i'm like too exhausted i don't i can't use my tools i'm like i'm just like not 
fresh. I'm not getting stuff done the way I'm like having anxiety because I'm just so tired. So she was like, you need to start like rewarding yourself for sleeping in. So I did it the other day where I was mm. like, I was like, oh my God, you made it to 9 a.m. Like, yes. Wow. And then I like slept till 10. And then I did have like this great day because I did have like a busy couple mm -hmm. days coming up because I just get so overwhelmed by there was like a thing on I think it was Daily Stoics Instagram and it, it said. Oh, that guy. He stresses me out. <laughs> but he's like, Listen, you're gonna die. Remember, you're gonna die. Yeah. Oh God. Marcus Aurelius said that you every morning, like he d yeah. he is always breaking down things that the Stoics said. Like that that guy stresses me out. He's always getting things done. He's like writing eight <laughs> books a day. But it is also like he has a like, family. Yeah. He's, he's like, there's a these people dump some trash. I'm gonna pick this up. Then I'm gonna write a book. And Marcus Aurelius said, like, in but here's the thing. He probably does the same amount of stuff we do. I know. Because I want to see his downtime. Because we like. I want to see everyone's downtime. I want to see people's downtime. I asked my friend the other day, like, I go, I, I'm on a girl's chat <laughs> with my friends, and I asked them the other day, take me through your day. I want to see. I want to know what you do. Oh my God. That would be I really so am tired of I would have a panic myself. attack if someone said My that friends too. like to go like shopping at. Like for new plants for their house. Or they like oh, to. Like, do that really that's why I don't like when people go, Nikki, you need a day off. And I'm like, a day off to you looks That's like stressful. going to go to the grocery store to meal plan and then making meals for the whole week and then, you know, doing your front stoop and making it, putting up decorations for Halloween. Like, I think days off to people are full of chores and I yeah. don't, I want a day off where it's literally nothing. nothing. And I don't think those exist in America. Like, you're a lazy piece of shit if you- We, well, then, our job okay. would allow us that though. Like, it's just, would you allow yourself that? Because- Ye Well, because our work does, this is fun. Like yeah. this doesn't feel like work, even though it is. But it sometimes is it does. It just depends. It's a because it sometimes it's like depending on but how many we've done. See those people. Um, um, I'm I see red flags and people who are chronically busy. Um, really alert me in all of the wrong ways, especially if it's somebody that I'm interested in and I see a guy who's always busy. Because the, um, someone asked this question, I don't know where, I forget what it was, but like, are you healed or are you just distracted? And I think a lot of people throw themselves in these like busy work mode to try to not deal with anything else in their lives. It's like, are they gonna crash eventually? And yeah, of see course, it though? Of it's course. like, course. or maybe- I, I'll, I'll just like they... cry. Like, I'll just like be like, all right, but here's the cry part. I've been called or like, I've been, I've maybe shamed myself into thinking I've been lazy my whole life. So much so <laughs> that before I date a guy seriously, I have to be like, hey, like I'm a lounger. Like I have to tell him like, I like to loaf around wow. and kind of chill. So if that's not yeah. like your thing, like we're just not gonna right. get along. But Kalila, do you have social anxiety or just not like enjoy being out that much? I love being out. I, I feel exhausted when I talk to people I'm not fully comfortable mm -hmm. with. Like I'm like, like most like, tense. Yeah, like you, like, like how many nights a week would you have like what your birthday was last year? Oh, by the way, when was your birthday? Uh, yesterday. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. I knew it was round here. I'm 38. Nearing. Yes, yes, bitch. Welcome to the club. <laughs> but I'm 39 now, bitch. Oh my wow. God. I feel, I always feel like you're older. I'm just, yeah. I get myself there so that when it happens, it doesn't feel Yeah, weird. yeah. Well, I, I just feel 39. I'm enjoying it all. It's all fun. Yeah, it's yeah. all been good. Um, A big night out. No, but I'm thinking about like your like so Kalila's birthday party last year was it? Yeah. Was like a karaoke room and Fun. it was like all of her friends Fun. and her family. And so it was like It's a it, lot of work. Yeah, but those are all the people that I was very like I'm already super close with. So it right. was fun and yeah. easy. So how many nights a week would you do that if that a week? Okay, well I'm yeah. finding out. Mom, uh, I once every uh, once a year? Cause I yeah. like going out, <laughs> I like doing stand up are. so much, I guess. So it's like, I love going out and doing stand up so much that it's like, it wouldn't even like occur to me to not. But I feel you, like you, know. you in, are energized by other am, people yeah. and you energize them back. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that same way. Yeah. I feel absolutely drained afterwards. Um, but I'm proud of myself after. Like yeah. when I come home, I'm like, oh, I did that. I had that conversation. But do you ever have, I feel like you have the dread. Of go of of doing right. something, and then yeah. when you do it, it's fun. It's exactly. rarely not yeah. fun. Like it's rare that we really get caught in a situation where we have to talk to people that were like, "This sucks." I mean, it's it happens, but right. we I think anticipate that more than it really happens. Yeah. I think I dread every single thing in my life. I think yeah. I dread. Yeah. Oh no, I have like over. Well, this was what I was gonna say. So the Daily Stoic guy, he had a thing where it's like you're not overwhelmed, you're just not managing your time. But I think on top of that, I have my dread like. 
I just shot this thing this morning and then I knew I was gonna have to shoot this. And I almost said no to this like really fun thing that I did because I was like, wait, I'm gonna have to get up at five in the morning and then I'm also gonna have to do something like in the afternoon. And then like, who knows if I'm gonna have to do a spot or whatever, like just the dread of being tired for one day was like so much. of not getting enough sleep. And then I ended up like having so much fun yeah. and I'm like, fuck, I would have been so sad if I didn't do that. No. And it and it's like I always look at myself like I'm burdened by my opportunities. Like when people ask me to like do Yeah. Like they're like, come be on my show or something like like I it's, I go through like a whole like spiral first. I hate it when it happens because at first you're just like I because I you feel that you feel like you should say yes. You know it will be right. fun afterwards. You know it. Yeah. But there's just that dread and that fear of not getting enough sleep and um and also just of yeah, I, I really just relate to not when you get asked to do things. I'm like, how fucking freaking out about it and being like, how much? But then also not having anything to do is yeah. horrifying. Yeah. And I don't know what to do with my time and thinking that someone else is doing that thing. Like, I just got jealous that you've been up since five and you like work today. It was really out. fun. Like, it I'm like, fun I just too. got jealous. I was like, oh, Nikki, you should have done a thing today. Why <laughs> did you turn that down? It's like, I just sat and got like, I got an IV drip today because I like, needed one for this inflammation I've been having. And I just was like sitting there and just like, you lazy piece of shit. And they're like, you going to the spa, getting a massage, those kind of things. Yeah. It's like the self-care that we're all shamed into if you don't do it you're shamed and then if you do it i just feel guilty well we have to stop it, worrying about like, what other people are saying to us and we should be like what do we want well, it, like that's just like you always have to silence that because it's like you're never gonna no it's it, a million people with a million ideas yes. i think also it's the idea that you have to um earn rest yeah is is really really I the most fucked that. up my thing. friend once said i was living with she was he was the only person who i've ever heard say i didn't earn i didn't earn a nap today yeah. And I'm, she's like, what does that even mean? And I'm like, you can't just, t- those are treats. That's dessert. You have to eat your dinner for it. I to, like- see the nap as the fuel though. The nap is the fuel for Yes, thing. yes. I love, and you know what? Like, I love sleeping. Me too. I love dreaming. I don't understand. I love and it. Same. I don't understand people who are like, I you know, I don't think it's when you die. I'm like, like, that is the one of the most, waking up after a deep Ugh. slumber and having nothing to do immediately and just sitting scrolling. I never give like, myself that feeling I though. I like scrolling. I like sleeping. Uh-huh. I like being in a bed with my partner next to me and not talking to him when we're both on Reddit. I like uh-huh. all the things that you're not supposed to do. Reddit, Reddit. bad girl. Reddit. I love Reddit. Too dark. Uh, I know. Yeah. You need help. I love this Reddit. This is the intervention. <laughs> Reddit's That's where I get all the stuff. Learn from Annie and I. Yeah. No, Reddit's too far. Oh, yeah. I, don't worry. I don't, I do my own subreddits. It's like Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh, cute ones. Okay. You know. Wait, have you um, listened to the whole album oh, yet? Duh. It's memorized. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Midnight Rain is like my favorite song. I there. love it so much. And it's so, I felt like there are so few songs that women in like, and Taylor Swift is like, her stuff is so relatable. But that one, I'm like, oh, I don't know that every woman can relate to this because it talks about like, he was feeling comfortable. I was chasing that pain. fame. Yeah, she was like chasing, fa- fame. chasing fame, pain. pain. He was comfortable. I'm like, I don't know that I'd be like a woman in the Midwest being like chasing that fame, chasing yeah. like and being able to. Re- but I, when I heard that song, I was like, oh, I relate. Like to they that made it so for me. Much. And there's the song so that's made for Esther. It's called Mastermind. I swear. Oh, that song. I haven't so listened good. to the whole thing. What's so Mastermind what is about tricking a guy into please love listen him. to oh Mastermind God. and tell me. I dare you to not think of Esther. I was li- I was thinking about you though because by the way you have completely merged yourself. With <laughs> Isn't it funny that I did not get a Taylor Swift of press box that fucking Spencer Pratt got one like all these people really? got one and they I've never I follow them I'm like I've never seen you talk, post about Taylor Swift ever and I got no I'm like I'll buy the things she's that she threw in it. the box already she's teasing you I feel I cried <laughs> I cried because I was so hurt I was like not that I want anything from her I don't tag her in things I don't want to bother her because I want her to be able to create I don't want her I don't want to meet her I don't need to have her go like calm me down and like that's I don't want her so to give- funny the idea that we thought you needed her to calm you down <laughs> <laughs> then you thought we were all like Nikki it's like she doesn't have I would time to cry. Come I would cry and be like, you just and, and her just being like, oh, thank like that's too much. She could put that towards a song. But can I, I don't want to bother like, her. I wasn't, it's not that but I was sad. like, I always like like Taylor Swift songs and stuff, but I never was like, like when you were obsessed with her, I was like, okay, Nikki, that's like, okay, that's your person, you're obsessed with her, whatever. I was listening to some of the songs and I was like, I get it, because it is like so inspirational that she just did all this shit by herself this way. Like it's it like speaks to me. I'm like it's so amazing. happy I have it. It's so la- I know it's so lame. I can't. It's not I'm lame. just like it's just it feels like 
almost the way like it feels like an identity and like as a white girl i don't really have one like it's sad that that has to be mine but i feel it just feels it's something it's something i care about more than anything well with the competitiveness can you use her as like would taylor swift have time to be looking at this person's thing oh you know what i mean you think that girl that girl has i mean her new song um uh anti-hero is about like hating yourself yeah. and always like reading what everyone says and not ever being enough. Yeah. Imagine having one, that many fans and reading them though. That's like endless. It's there's forever. There's one line there about she talks about being a covert narcissist. Oh yeah. Did you, uh, it's, but the, oh my God, I, I can't be, come up with it right now, but the line about like, sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby, baby. And, and I'm, I'm a monster, monster on the hill. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, and she's just like crawling around in the music video like a big old <laughs> monster. And like the fact that Taylor Swift thinks she's a monster and that they're sexy babies like there's she's comparing herself. She has this song called Nothing New with Phoebe um, Bridgers on her Red album that if and I know that you probably Not have for Phoebe, Phoebe, Ridger, it, Phoebe Bridgers. It is so good because it's about being like. We started out young, Mm -hmm. right? We were like, we got the attention for being young. And then you start, you go, oh my God, I'm not the young one anymore. I was getting attention for being the young, cute one. And then you become eclipsed by the next thing. And it's about people kind of like getting tired of you. There's just so much to compare to. But uh, what was the, did Mike, did you hear my covert narcissism disguised as ultra? That one where it's like like some kind of congressman. The, the, the. She goes, did you hear my covert narcissism? I might disguise as altruism. Oh my God. So she's acknowledging oh God. that she might be a covert narcissist, which is hugely, I mean, she's more calling out people who've called her that, yeah. but she's giving it a nod to it. And I felt like this album of every single one before it, I just felt like, man, she is just digging. It made me want to be a more honest artist. Well, wasn't her like, wasn't the, wasn't called Midnight's because it was like different nights that kept her up. Or yeah. Something. That's Things so she, fucking like, stays awesome. up thinking about. And I mean, it is cool to like break the fourth wall with your audience and like let them see. And then her last song, Dear Reader. So good. It's it, so she does this whole album that's just like, and we're just eating it up being like, she's, uh, I'll do anything Taylor Swift said. Like for me, I'm just like, she's a saint. And then she goes, the last song is called Dear Reader. And it's like, don't trust a narrator who has problems. Yeah, basically, like, don't like, don't take advice from someone who's falling apart. And I'm falling apart yeah, clearly. So like, don't put me herself. on this pedestal. And it was just like, and then our song, and then Mastermind is like, I thought that was so honest to admit that you like this thing that this. She's like, sorry, babe, you thought it was fate that we met that night. Like, I I had I planned it all. Yeah, like us gently touching in that crowded room that was planned. Us like. And she was, and then it just, it just yeah. being just so honest. And I felt like she is someone that is very um, curated and she's been called orchestrated, which is just a way to call like dismiss women, like, or calculated. It's like, well, yeah. so I'm not supposed to plan anything, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so I think it was just an answer to yeah, it. Then but, pick where we're going to eat. <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, I was in her documentary, like talking shit about her. Yeah, I saw and that. it was like, it was a wake up call. Of all the humans on earth that didn't I mean, want that to happen. So <laughs> ironic yeah. that it happened that way. But I, I care so much better. I was like, because my friends go, no way that she, it was just my voice going, she's too thin and all her model friends, ugh, enough. Like I said something like that. That's so funny. And it was during the 1989 era when she was struggling with an eating disorder. She had all model friends. I was like, she wouldn't let me be her friend with the way I look right now. And I was just- Yeah, I was like all just like- Yeah. And so I, my friends were like, there's no way that's your voice. Like, because it was just my voice in the trailer and I go, I'm in this fucking documentary. (laughs) And they was like, you would never say that about her. I'm like- they're like, you love her. She's like your best friend. I go, yeah, I've talked about you this way, bitch. Like, I, yeah. this is the way you talk about your friends yeah. when they get too skinny and like get friends now, that look better than you. And- do you, um, how often have you had dreams where you're hanging out with Taylor Swift? Often. Yeah. And you wake and up hanging kind of out. Sad. Let's be honest. I love that she works with Jack Antonoff. Yes. Um, yeah. From the Bleachers. And I think I always recommend if you ever want to watch like a great live show, the Bleachers is it. Yeah. So entertaining. Yeah. He's so fucking good. He's such a hot boy too yeah do you like would you ever want to like work with the people she's worked with do you have eyes on that type of thing my friend asked me the other day this is a good question to ask yourselves if you could get a call right now on your phone with an opportunity or just any call really and it within reason Mm -hmm. you know um what would it be what would be the call what would they be saying what would they be i'd still be like god damn it why are you asking me to do something (laughs) 
I know. I'm has, busy. I can't make that movie. I, it's an interesting question because I don't. I don't want them. Of course, I want to be asked to host SNL at some point. But when that call comes in, I'm going to be like, God damn it! Dread. Like this is a lot. Oh my god, how much a lot of pressure? I got. I got. It's hard to read. It's going to be a hard yes. For this me. is when America learns. I'm not kidding. I cannot read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just did a thing with um, Taryn Killam and and uh, oh, Bobby yeah. Moynihan today, and I it was like crazy to be like reading prompter next. I was like, Oh God, you guys are fucking so used to this. Um, I'm before, like, still learning to read. Sorry. Before we end, I wanted to ask you guys this question that's been on my brain, which is um, a friend of mine's husband recently got a vasectomy. And she basically was like, I'm afraid that once he gets it, because they already have like a couple kids together. I'm afraid when, when he gets it, I'm not going to be as like sexually attracted to him anymore. Mm. And is there something to the our biology of knowing that we could get pregnant from someone that turns us on? Mm. And the amount I like anal says no. <laughs> <laughs> She's got that Catholic girl in her. That's interesting, though. I I, I would have never thought of that, but that's a really good... Because after the vasectomy, her. apparently, you have to masturbate 50 times to make sure that you empty out the gun completely. You I don't want to see a medical masturbation, okay? <laughs> like, I... <laughs> well, that's what they are. Like, a prescribed masturbation, like, you got this. Uh, how, this how, and also, the, the, the number 50 just seems like a wild guess to me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, around 50. 50. That's, that's how much that stuff sits around in there. 50 I guess. masturbation. Locked that and loaded. a lot. But do you think that, like... How do you, would that change the way you feel? Like, I, I like that there's like a breeding fetish of like, yes. get me pregnant. There's like Thank a, you. it's hot. It I is, say it all right? the time. I don't want to get pregnant. I, we do not, we, you know, there's no plan of that, but like it's brought up every single time. Well, I, I, when I sleep with boys, I tell them beforehand, no matter what I say, <laughs> you cannot come inside. But me. nothing. But then during, it's like, give me that baby. Yes, like, yes. Blast yes. the load. Like guys really. Are like and I got pull him in. But then beforehand, I'm like, like, no matter what I said before. Yeah. And then uh, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like when your biology takes over and you're in like the heat of the moment, yeah. like you do want to be cummed into. Nothing I, me, feels better than a night. But I guess bridging. maybe the vasectomy though you get to get cummed in, and so maybe if you, you when you enter that also, mammal brain, work. you're not thinking about vasectomy. He they had it taken out. Work. It's just come is come, like any kind of fluid sure. in you. Or you, maybe I can still get turned on knowing that it's reversible. Yeah, it's reversible, uh, and they're yes. not like hundred percent. You're just like picturing him going in for a fucking reversal. <laughs> like, or maybe oh. like maybe the challenge of maybe him still getting me pregnant even with a vasectomy. That oh, might that's be hot. hot. Yeah, like let's see. Uh, because yeah. there have been that science. before. Yes. Yeah. And just getting cummed in freely, like I think that without the fear of actually getting pregnant, so I awesome. think would. But is make that hot hotter. or is that less hot? I think it's. I, I think you're right. It's is maybe it we can beat the odds. <laughs> and that he can I love them. a slot machine. <laughs> but it doesn't yeah, look it. different, right? It's still the same and tastes the same. It's just a little higher. It's like a nose job. Like a little, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a little. The sperm just have little X's in their <laughs> eyes. Well, you guys, thank you so much for watching us. Yet again for another episode. Thank you so much, Nikki. Oh my gosh, thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks for coming back. I just, I'm so sorry I didn't do the good. Esther thing of sitting like this. And like do wearing a really big, things. hiding yeah. her tits in her big shirt. Annie! <laughs> disgusting whore! Fuck that, Esther. She wouldn't say whore. She'd be like, ew. Like, you would say whore. She's like, whore, ew. Uh, no. <laughs> She's like, slut. She says slut. 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 Oh, you stupid slut. Um, it was so fun. I love you guys. Thank Yay, you for having me. Thanks, Nikki. See you guys next week. Bye.